So, um, AMV is the greatest archive anyone could ever ask for. You know, of all the books I've read, of all the other online tutorials I have seen, this was the missing key. Every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this, this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMB Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB. And it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved a lot and it's more alive than ever. And what I also like about his animation training is that you also gain real confidence. Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. And uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And so thank you, MB, so much. And uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> so, are you going to join the library? Hello, hello and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Alright, this is going to be a great live stream um, because it's going to be one that's staying up for you guys and it's going to be a really, really informative one. Um, I'm going to be doing some learning for myself. Uh, so as I learn, you're going to be learning. Um, one of the things that I, I want to improve myself at is uh, cartooning. When I say cartooning, that's what we animators, we all do, right? Well, um, sadly, no, and it's getting less and less. I mean, cartooning today is now just snapping from one post to the next with a little bobble afterwards, with a snap of the head, with a wiggle of the hand, with a gesture here, with a gesture there, in and out, with software sliding, big graphic shapes, boring expressions. When you look at the classic um, Mickey Mouse's, Donald Duck's, Goofy's, um, Bugs Bunny's, uh, Tom and Jerry's of yesteryear, we're talking 1950s, even 1940s, 30s, some of them. Those guys were just leagues ahead. They knew, they drew their cartoons, they drew their squash and stretch, they followed animation law they didn't rely on simple gimmicks. They weren't, you know, ten a penny or in these days a thousand a penny um, push button animators who have just, you know, learned a few formulas and just used them for particular every character that they do. Now, <clears throat> I do the more humanoid stuff and uh, cartoon realism, uh, not not strict cartoon realism uh, that's why i use the word cartoon realism as opposed to com comic book realism um but uh one of the things that i want to get better at is uh the actual cartooning so i'm going to be looking at some classic 
Donald Duck today. We're going to be looking at a classic Donald Duck. Uh, I found something, not necessarily one of the, the strongest animated shorts, but something I wanted to get my teeth into where I could learn and also explain it to you guys what we're doing. Um, I don't think she's online, but I got a, uh, a question from somebody who follows my YouTube. You in Real Animator Training will, of course, know how to do this, but uh, people just following off YouTube won't. Uh, they say, how do you know when you study? You're always saying study animation, just go to a YouTube and you can frame by frame it on pause and study. But I always say, don't just copy it frame by frame. Look for the, <clears throat> excuse me, look for the extreme poses, look for the key poses, look for the breakdowns. Don't worry about making it all flow, fluid and all that kind of stuff. And then they say, well, how do you do that? Well, that's because you need to know the fundamental law of pose to pose and straight ahead and that's why you can tell where are your keys where are your breakdowns so we're going to be doing that we're going to be looking at a donald duck walk cycle and then we're going to be looking how that walk cycle turns into something else uh, a lot of fun um fun to do right before we begin i might i might as well say a few hellos to the people we have online We've got Zentron. How are you? He's first. He's, he's going to be going to bed soon, I know, because it's uh, probably 12, 12.40 a.m. in the UK. Uh, it's 11.40. Um, no, 12.40 uh, yeah, a.m. in the UK. It's 11.40 a.m. in New Zealand here at the moment. Um, Mutant Midori Animations. How are you? Good to see you, Cameron. Alan Davidson Black. Kitcha Cat. Uh, Tim McHugh Animation. Good to see you. Um, I've been making an outline for my topics and crafting short videos. Excellent, Mute Midori. Full steam ahead. Um, Deruji, good to see you. How are you? Good to see my friend Deruji uh, online this time. It's going to be late for him too. Uh, Black Belt Jones, how are you? No, he won't be going to sleep until 3. Well, you're in for a treat, uh, Zentron. Going to be looking at some classic animation yeah black black belt jones no you gotta say it like jim kelly Doi! Doi! <laughs> doing well silver sun yes i did see your message silver sun i did see your message look silver sun um it's difficult for me to reply to messages uh, at the moment um currently Groundhopper is is not happening on a major scale like uh, Groundhopper is you know I'm doing the development work for that um, and making courses for it using that great one to make a course for it um, the first uh, crowdfunder we'll be doing will be the alpha man and um, if there's anything at the moment we need to it's capital uh, silver sun at the moment uh, it's it's about getting capital before we can bring people in so if there's any any opening then certainly i will be looking for a few people at the moment i'm looking for concept artists uh visual concept artists ones who are strong at drawing none of this crafting together layers of photoshop and copy paste and all that kind of stuff so i need ones who could really understand perspective and things like that um doing better now awesome diruji king fu conan good to see you all right we've had eight minutes of um talking we've had eight minutes of uh of hey life fantasy nice to see you we have eight minutes of catching up with each other um now let's get into the stream uh we've got a fairly uh, good uh, crowd of people online at the moment but the you know you, if you miss it here you can catch it um you can catch it elsewhere okay so i've got my uh i've changed my setup um so now i am going to look at a for for you guys who want to reference this at home it's disney's donald duck how to have an accident at home 1956 1956 all right so i am going to jump straight into this and i'm going to start um 
as usual you guys are gonna have to let me know what's going on because I can't see the chat at the moment uh, so I'm just gonna be talking away how's my mic is my mic coming up good no complaints yet let me just check my levels yeah because I'm gonna be away from the control deck as I'm looking at the YouTube screen now okay so we're gonna jump straight into the walk cycle now I'm going to be quite quite uh, quick about this, as quick as possible. So I'm going to do a bit of silhouette drawing uh, mixed with um, slight uh, construction to just send me on my way, right? So we've got the body, which is this shape here. Now already, now I'm going with, you know, with, with a walk cycle. I'm going with what we call the contact position, right? So his foot is made contact with the ground. Now he's holding some kind of beaker here or fish bowl or something. And we will draw that in nicely afterwards, right? But I am addressing the question how to make studies and know what you're looking at, right? So already now this walk is already very different to the to the now now we've got the the foot now this is the undersole so I'm going to do that, right? And it's got a nice stretch on the leg here like this. Now what I can already see with the contact position, right? What I believe is the contact position. Look how this is in line with this, right? So he's he's not off balance. Is um, let me just get that down. Is that we also have a down knee position here, probably because of the the length of the characters let me just find his eye line so i don't want that kind of coming back i want this stream to be as fast as possible right so also let me just give myself something to work with with the mouth there as well right okay that's actually like that so We've got a down in the rear knee here, right? So he's bending his knee. So his knee is already in quite a down position. So, you know, the same way when we learn in real animator training, when we do the run cycle, we call we, we combine the down with the pass position. Oh, he's got a bow tie. I'm going to draw him in properly later. Um, here I can see that we have got the um, down with the contact position, right? So now I'm going to jump straight in here and we're going to go straight to the other extreme, the other extremity, right? Which is the, now I'm going to watch what happens to that fishbowl. It goes up and it goes down. So it just goes up and down, right? So the fishbowl goes up and down. So I'm keeping an eye on my arcs, right? So now this this is the other contact. Now, why haven't I done any of the other poses? The other poses could be keys, right? Because I'm working on what we call extremes, right? I'm working on extremes. So everything's going to kind of be in a similar position, but not quite, right? He's leaning forward a little bit more. And I guess that's because his tail is facing us. Some of you will remember that now this sweater line or whatever, his top line is changing because we're playing with perspective. He's turned his body the other way. And this leg is not quite so downed, right? Interesting foot shape, right? This comes up, there's just straight line here and we're just gonna create this kind of thing here like that right I'm gonna turn so this leg isn't quite as downed and what we have what I've messed messed up here is, is we've got a little bit of the floor interesting foot shape right 
we got a little bit of the floor there like that right now his arms are kind of like forward on themselves so i'm gonna bring this thing just a little bit forward and he's kind of his hands are quite static i've seen donald move a lot more squash and stretch and flowy than this but I'll tell you why I chose the 1950s Donald Duck as opposed to the, the more expressive, actually sometimes what I believe to be better animated than even this one. It's because I'm, I, I want to do a little scene with a Disney's Darkwing Duck. And some of you saw me making studies of that the other day. Now, I think Darkwing Duck's an amazing design. But sadly, his animation was never done any justice because it was never animated by anybody who could actually animate. Um, I'm sorry if that sounds uh, um, elitist or whatever, but I'm here to help educate people. I'm here to help people open their eyes. Um, those of you who are wise to that will know what I mean. It's done, you know, on the quick, on the cheap. It's uh, just not really using the character's um, strengths, not really moving very well at all. So I'm looking at a duck in a similar style that is very well animated but also one that's drawn with the more slightly modern aspect because some of the older donalds which i feel move nicer than these ones um they're a little bit more rubber hose uh, and the shapes are a little bit different to the um to the to the darkwing character so i'm kind of looking to study the ones which were where they stiffened him up a bit to uh, in the 50s um but not when i say stiffened him up i don't mean like it's still like this is still like amazing what i've written in the title of this video real cartoon animation right it's not um it's not uh it's not anything it's not anything bad right i'm just giving you the the skinny of things to that are going through my head what why am i doing this what's the reason um okay so here we have the two there's going to be another walking forward position now i could do that but let's just do one step at a time right now i could go and draw in these extremes very well but i'm not going to because there's one more extreme that i want to put in and that's my passing position let me just check the status of my stream okay um, um, I don't think they did Darkwing Duck any justice in the, any new Donald Duck because it's, you know, it's drawn in that awful style where they don't know how to cartoon. But anyway, sometimes it's a matter of opinion. But when it comes to the stuff that I'm talking about hair, the actual cartooning skills and the movement and not, you know, turn the volume down, don't listen to the jatty dialogue and just look at the actual movement, um, it's not really, you know, doesn't really do it, you know, doesn't really do justice to the drawing, you know, the, the rich drawing traditions that this animation comes from um, and lends itself to the push button um, animation that is prevalent today. All right. So the pass position is an up. So his body has come up. Now it's, um, his body is coming up. So they're combining the contact with the down and they are um, giving him an up on the pass position, which is pretty cool. Now inside the silhouette, now this is very important why I talk about silhouette drawing. In the silhouette, we've got the bent knee, right? Which is coming like this and it comes. So his knee is fully inside the silhouette here look at that look at that walk this walk cycle is going to be great yeah well i know because i've seen it like and i'm studying from it so i can't take credit for it we're just watching and learning right we're watching and learning like a lecture right so uh, when i say it's going to be great it's because i've seen it i've got it here before me and i've chose to study it because i feel it's going to really enrich you guys right so the Inside the silhouette, we got the bent knee like that. So we can already see the nice squash and stretch. And the body is coming up, but not too much in the tail department. Now the head 
comes up and it comes I'm going to bring it forward a little bit before it comes back on itself like this right so the head is going to come up and it's going to favor this position right of course if I was animating it myself I would throw in head nods and things like that but when you're studying it's difficult to make those things out so I'm just going to go with my what I've got and my instinct so while I'm making the study I'm also going on instinct as well and what I know about the laws of animation so it's not going to be a hundred percent right but we can see how this is moving now I'm not I'm, I'm going to tidy these uh, extremes up before we move on to the other positions and that's a good way of, of familiarizing yourself with the model of the character right now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to bring his arms um, let me see does it go up with him because I would lower his arms I would lower his arms no it goes up with him okay so interesting so we're being very very um, static with the arms right I would have lowered the arms but let's bring the arms up I guess what we're doing here is, is where then having more action in the elbow to keep them in the same place. I see what he's done. Right. So I would have actually done a bit more with that, but we're doing some elbow action. Okay. Right. So these are the first three poses of the walk, right? Now, I'm not going to be here all day um, making uh, these drawings super, super pretty. But before we continue with this, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, tidy these drawings up a little bit, right? So while I tidy them up, I'll just see what's going on in the chat, see if there's anything I can talk about. Um, fantastic, Silverstone did some studies. Um, Okay, so what version of the Wacom tablet do you have? Well, I've got the Cintiq 27H uh, Pro. The Cintiq 27 Pro. That's what I have. All right, let's continue. Let me go back a little bit. Let's um, go back and let's lock these drawings down some. So I'm going to take this here like this. All right, so let's look at his mouth shape. We're just going to go straight down there like that. And this is going to make it a lot easier. And this is how I recommend, like, I don't suggest, you know, depending on your level, right? You're going to be doing animation breakdowns. Um, if you follow me at all, you're going to be doing animation breakdowns at every level you're at right it's just a good way to study but if you're early on in your animation journey i suggest not trying to draw like i'm drawing at the moment just keep it rough and concentrate on the law and the movement right notice how this is going this way i won't talk about this all the time but we've got perspective on the characters face right now we've got this coming down here we've got a little bit of hair coming here like this and we have this coming straight in there what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna blow that head up a little bit because I feel that's more to the proportion of the character right now his neck comes in bow tie hair I'm not gonna spend too much time on that we've got his arm 
with a bit of a sleeve here like this oopsie coming up and then the now the way they've done this is there's a little bit I've done it too much a little bit of a taper to give him some form this comes off the back it's a little bit thinner like that there we go this is pretty spot on that comes up the tail it's a little bit more there like that there we go and then he's got his sailor collar which comes up and this way then we're gonna just put some marks on there like that I'm a little bit wonky a little bit out but it's all right it does enough now this is more important the leg hair like this I've got to pay full attention to the legs um, let's bend this in this comes up it's these that I'm slowing down on because I want to learn how to do them properly myself I assume I know but I don't right never you know assumption is good but consolidation of your assumption you know equals growth right so now here this curls in like this and we've just got a little fine thing there like that to create the you know the turn this way of the foot now I'm gonna use something called place and trace for the solid object inanimate object because it's fine to do it for this right this is where the unfortunately the symbol animators um, of today they do the what I'm doing with this thing they do um, that with the character as well and that's why today's cartoon animation is non-existent you know you can say it exists well you know the shit in the toilet exists but then you flush it away and it's um it doesn't exist anymore and my hope is is that you know the people who want to learn this real animation are going to flush that stuff away and start focusing on drawing um and making themselves more skillful at cartooning animation and all of the things that made cartoons so appealing back in the day not so much the the chatty dialogue you know it was a visual medium where artists really you know the best artists in the world um, really played to their strengths right <clears throat> so actually this bow tie is slightly off right we want it coming off like that okay right so that's that one right now I'm gonna just I could like go and tidy up the other key like that um, or I could just go about doing it in a straight ahead fashion um, I feel I'm just gonna do it in a straight ahead fashion because it's just quicker you know uh, they're all extremes so it doesn't matter right so I'm gonna go and look at the next pose bum, 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 bum. we're gonna break his step down right to understand what's happening right so already in this um, in this pass position we can see he's leaning forward um, and he's traveling upward so it's a forward lean right um, the bow tie is here you can see how silhouette drawing kind of helps you manage these shapes right 
the what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my friend here. Just copy that. That'll save me a bit of time. Um, I'm going to turn the light box off for a minute because I really want to see my hand working at the elbow here. Right, see that's wrong. The light box made it slightly wrong. So I'm going to bring this forward. I may get a better hand position now. One. I'm just going to split it into three. I don't care about getting the fingers so right because I just want to keep the stream moving, right? You can go and knock yourself out with that when you study it yourselves, right? So we're going to have this come back here like this. Now I'm going to paste this in. Now I'm going to turn the light box on for a minute. I'm going to move this accordingly. There we go, right? That's place and trace, right? Uh, it's copy and paste and trace here, but back in the day we would take, we would either cut it out and trace it, you know, from a photocopy, or we would, um, we would, what I would do is, is I would simply pick my paper, I would rough out where I wanted it, which is what I did here. And I would simply pick my paper off the animation pegs, and then I would, um, uh, go about let's just do that right, that comes in then I would just trace it where wherever I'd want it to be traced right so that that comes in now interesting incomplete the flat silhouette so that's out the silhouette now it's in the silhouette like that interesting and then this comes up like that now as I mentioned before We've got the rear section of the leg, right? Coming down and in like this, right? With the foot. Now what they're done to the foot here, which is interesting, is they've given him a little side bit there. I wouldn't have th thought that they would need to do it on that particular drawing, but it's there. So he's stretching up like this. Right. And then we've got the bottom foot, which comes out a little. And we get a little bit of perspective out of it. And we put in the bottom bit there like that. Let's just see. Yeah, that's all in line. Now for the head. Now the head is making us a bit of a, a three-quarter turn here. So the beak comes up. The beak is... His beak is a little bit different to the, to the dark wing duck beak. But it's more or less the same. They're all the same. Um, you know, even Daffy Duck, which is from a different studio, even there's his beak pretty much is works like this. Um, so that comes down here like this. Now we're seeing more of the midline of his head, right? So the midline is here, but we see the eye on either side. So one eye here. You see his eye on the profile here like this. But you're seeing it more on this one. As he's turning his head a little bit more to us. You see more of this eyebrow. And this eyebrow. So his head has come up. Sometimes when you're flipping you think. Is his head really coming up or is it just looking up? But it is traveling up. You want to always check your arcs. So now we have the fur design, which is changing a little bit on there like that. 
So again here, what I'm going to do, just to keep my volumes, is I'm going to grow his head slightly like I did with the last one. Let me just put that there. There we go. That's better, right? So now we're going to do the next pose, right? So we're on to the next contact. So the next contact pose is pretty much in line with what the head is pretty much in line with what we had. I've, I've roughed, roughed it out everything where I need it to be. So I can start with these hands actually. The hand I'm literally just making that silhouette shape and I'm very lazy lazily just um, throwing in the um, fingers. If you're gonna spend time on it then you can make the fingers and thumbs a little nicer kind of like what I've done there but we've got a lot of fun things happening in in this piece of animation so I don't want to spend too long on these drawings I'm literally referencing them and going through them as quickly as I can right so let me get this here and let me put this it's a little bit lower than it should be let me put this here like that yeah that's what they've done <coughs> um, so we're gonna get this here and the other arm comes in here like this I'm gonna turn off my light box because it's actually putting me off right I've got the drawing uh, before to refer to and I've got my proportions and everything pretty much intact for what I'm doing so I don't need the light box. Can you see why these are called extremes now? Um, and why you know pose to pose animation is a very good way of doing um, good cartoon animation but then you want to throw in a bit of straight ahead as well but that's it only really looks nice if you know animation law right a bit of follow through overlap and drag is is good but that's um you know that's just schoolboy stuff you know um what i mean about straight ahead is, is i mean you know really pushing squash and stretch and things like that um, when you're working certain moves out right so this this foot is turned this way right so he turns his foot this way and oddly enough we still see that and uh, now here we have this interesting foot shape that I want to study so I find it fascinating Right, so we come up here like this, coming off the ground really flat like that. Let's see, I made that leg just a little bit thick. There we go. Now the head comes down low, his neck is shorter here. I can it turns more towards us so the beak gets a little bit smaller although truth be told I'm not too fussed about getting a hundred percent volumes on the beak or anything like that just enough to make it look nice and work on the stream so you gotta have a good stream you don't just see me scribble and go right that was the walk you know um we all love to draw and we like to watch people draw i get it um so i'm slowing down a little bit not too much to get uh so that you guys can 
see the drawing and maybe follow along if you want at home although this isn't really a follow on kind of video but some people in my community surprise me and they actually follow along to some of these videos that I do all right that's the initial I'm just gonna fatten up this neck here that's the initial main poses right we've missed an up but we've got the two extremes so there's gonna be one key pose the three extreme poses right contact down pass up and a contact down again right now I'm not th there's gonna be a breakdown between here and here we could call it a key but I'm gonna do one either side but the one on either side it's more important from hair to hair um, because it's very interesting what happens. Um, hey, Moitunes, how are you? Let's just look at what's going on in the chat. Um, if you believe animation should conform to specific methods, how would anyone really express themselves creatively? But that's just it. They're not expressing themselves creativity. Creativ creativity creatively they've learned little gimmicky tricks and they're popping in and out of poses and they all move the same so you can ignore my 20 years of experience in the business you can ignore my expertise because you're a fanboy that's fine you can do that I'm not stopping you from doing that you can still enjoy the stream but just open your mind a little bit you can say it's just my opinion it's an opinion with 20 years working at the top working with people from Disney Bluth Warners okay um, animation director um, head of story it's just my opinion sure but how about your opinion what have you done where have you been you, you, you like watching shows okay well that's a good opinion you like watching shows and you can talk about what you like that's fine but I'm here to educate people who want, actually want to be good at this so that's what my streams are about I'm not having a go at you thank you for contributing to the chat but I'm also I've got a wide community here that I'm talking to <coughs> of people that I really care about and I thank you because you've given me the opportunity to talk about real animation because we're coming to a stage where everybody's frightened about AI all right and the kind of animation you're talking about is almost superfluous the human is irrelevant in that kind of 2d snappy software tweening you know the tweening and all of that with the rig being built oh you know nowadays you've almost got snapchat filters which can follow an actor and the the the, the shape-shifting push-button animator that you're bowing down to animator I you know can barely think of using that term for them um, will soon be irrelevant because that kind of animation is an expression of AI so I'm here to talk to human beings who want to who, who feel pride and value in what they're doing in their drawing in the marks they're making the very individualistic marks things that AI cannot replicate and when it does it's uncanny because humans can chop and change it they can break the rules um, so and every mark you make that's it it's come the AI can copy it but it's never gonna you know human being imagination is limitless and when you understand the laws of animation you're not amassing things from an existing library of anything you know the laws you've learned and now you're making marks from your imagination the limitless imagination so the work that you're doing you're limited only by your imagination that's hand-drawn animation and I'm here to I'm here so again I thank you don't take offense I thank you for enabling me to remind my audience of why this kind of animation is infinitely superior to the garbage being you know mass produced today which is only a push button away from eliminating the human operator 
Um, okay, right. <coughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the up, right? We're going to go into the up votes. We are the up votes, but we're going to make a key out of it, which is a lot of fun. So between here and here, right? We're going to extend the foot right out, right? So the foot is going to come out like this and it's going to be following the arc. So I'm following an arc. So the arc is doing this, right? Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. The arc is doing this. And everything else is kind of in betweening, in betweening back. So remember how in real animator training, I would always talk about, you know, um, this being an up position, right? Um, oopsie, I've missed something. Sorry. I've jumped straight into something without, without, um, I've jumped straight into the special key, right? This actually isn't the up position. Scratch that, right? I've jumped, I've jumped one ahead, okay? This, I just realized that because I had a little look. If you look at the thumbnail for this video, I had a little quick scribble for about 10 minutes before coming on the stream. And I noticed something very interesting, which I was, I was just too excited to share it with you guys because I love sharing, right? So this is the pass position, which is combined into an up, but we're going to delay that leg. I hope I got the right one. Right. Yeah. Okay, we're going to delay that leg. Yeah. We're going to delay that. Right. And this is going to come down here like this. So watch the arc of this. This is really staying tight. It's almost like the bouncing ball, right? Now we're changing the angle of the foot like this, right? We're changing the angle of the foot. Like this. Now, just like a bouncing ball would like bounce and to get to this stop position here it would keep creeping up before the sudden change and i i reveal to you what the sudden change is you know he's going to kick his leg out in the next frame right so it's going to be a big nice sudden change right so what we actually want you know damn i spoiled it for you you know what's coming right so here we're going to have the tail here like this. And this is the usual kind of business, right? We're going to half that foot there like that, right? Now, these hands are all very um, straightforward. Everything else is just in betweening back on itself. So his top half is very kind of his top half is doing the the straight guy acting, right? It's um just completely, you know, I'm very when I say straight guy, I just realized in this day and age you gotta really be careful about the things you say. I mean straight and like straightforward. All right. It, there's there's just plain straightforward um, action going on here, right? Um, nothing. It's almost static. There's nothing really, nothing going on uh, that's exciting like what's going on with the legs, right? 
So here I'm not going to bother drawing in these break these key positions. Um, so uh, I can actually just it might be faster for me to just half this shape rather than trying to copy and paste it and find it right. So we have something like this, right? So we're really holding on to that position. I'm going to clean up this foot just a little bit so we can see that. Let's strengthen those lines. And the head is just coming back on itself, right? So again, now those that talk about silhouette drawing, right? Silhouette drawing is a great way of finding your volume, right? So I'm just making this in between, but I'm just doing his silhouette, right? And the silhouette pretty much is got the volume because it's the master shape what we call in the secret science of shape simplification it's the master shape and this is gonna come down here like that All right now I'll just use I can keep it loose. I think that that passes for his face. You know, we got to keep this stream moving. I've got to keep a check on time because there's a there's still a lot to do. We've got another step to do, but I'm almost done with this step, right? I forgot about that drawing. That was the one drawing that I wanted to let's let's just, you know, it's bugging me, right? Let's just do it again, right? Um, like that. There, right? That's pretty good. All right. A bit wobbly, but who cares? It doesn't look like a big scribble that's going to take away attention from the movement right so there we go that's the first step now we're going to speed through the next step but before i go speeding through the next step um we can't see the animation just you a and b that shouldn't be right Oh, darn. Oh, darn. 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 Okay. Um, how shall I do this? Shall I edit this out later or shall we have this as a live stream? Okay, so I made this drawing here, right? Okay. I made this drawing here. Let's do it again. All right. Let's tidy it up. Okay. There you go. We'll tidy it up. And you're sticking around. 29 people just looking at my face talking about here's how we do this. Here's how we do that. My goodness. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, maybe you didn't see my face. That was a good thing. I didn't give the game away. Now, I didn't give the game away. So, okay. We're back on track. Okay. So between here and here. Okay, so if you, you know, I may have to go back and edit this. When you edit a video, you don't see the live chat, but who cares? Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm tidying this drawing up that I made. And the, if you're watching this, I'm going to have to edit out a little chunk of the video, meaning that you're not going to be seeing the live chat. But apparently, the, one of the problems about switching cameras, right, um, is I forgot to change the scene, right? And I explained something, but I explained too far ahead. And then I realized that this was the drawing I needed to be doing. 
But in a way, I'm glad that error happened because I can still now show everybody, including the live audience, I can show them the secret, right? So what, what I'm doing, what's happening in this frame, this is, the con this is the down contact, this is the pass up, right? But this is the up in the leg. We're kind of like, you see how close together those legs are? Almost like a bouncing ball as it's going up and then say you're coming say you eliminate this third and you come up on two thirds of the way, right? Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, tough, okay? I've got a lot of members on here and there's a lot of professionals and students that watch me as well. So um, you come two thirds of the way up, but you're gonna stay around this pose to slow into this pose, right? So the beginners, maybe you know what the word slow in, it's okay? So we're slowing into this pose, right? Um, and I'm going to use a color that I shouldn't have, right? So let's just do that, right? So that's essentially what this is. And the rest of the character is just, you know, he's just in between him. He's kind of like, as I was saying, it's just a straightforward action, you know? It's just really, you know, contrasting what's happening to the legs. Because it's it's also to do with the staging and the acting of the shot. He's gonna he's gonna fall over, right? So we're gonna do a two step cycle, just just a, a two steps, and then he's gonna fall over, right? So the acting has got him as the straight guy, right? So just very bland, boring kind of upper torso, not doing much, right? And I was talking about keeping volumes, right? So what I did is, is I traced the head. I didn't trace the head. I'm tracing my own rough now. But I in between the outline shape. I was talking about in betweening outline shapes, right? And I said that's how you keep volume, right? That's a great way of keeping volume by doing the outline shape. Then we come in here. I'm just seeing if if I'm still. If my audience is still happy, all right, am I, you know, did I leave it on face cam, right? Then I'm just going to very hurriedly. Make these lines here like that. OK, so that's it, right? That's the up bows, right? So these are that's our that's our um key right these are our extremes and our keys right now i'm gonna put in the breakdowns and the breakdowns is gonna be very interesting right we're gonna have a breakdown between here and here but that's not the fun one right the fun one now here's what here's what we're talking about when that guy earlier was talking about cartoon animation and this and that no um, you know, this is this is actual fact, you know, this is an opinion. So the breakdown between here and here, right, is very, very interesting, right? Because he's really savored this moment and the very next frame, right? There's a lot of in-betweens on this, right? But everything else, so let me very quickly, right, let me very quickly everything else in this animation is a straight up you know in between so i'm just going to go in here and do that this is why this is this is a this is the kind of breakdown that you know a junior animator would do rather than an assistant animator right so normally you'd say, okay, well, it's just an in-between, right? Bear with me, right, as I make this drawing. So normally you'd say, okay, we're just in-betweening all these features. I may need to look at the drawing of his rear foot, which is interesting. Even the head, right? There's nothing really fascinating going on with the head it's all just as it is and again right 
I'm being really loose with the head, but there's a interesting angle changes being done. There's, you know, a lot of scope and possibility. We're not just taking a cutout shape and sliding it around because we don't have the ability to draw it. All right, that's not an opinion. That's a fact. That's what a lot of supposed animators, which I affectionately call push button operators, automators, who will soon be replaced by real automation, and then real animators will be doing real animation. Um, they just can't draw the head. They think they're saving time, but the reality is, is they can't draw the head. So they've got a habit of just sliding the previous head or using the motion tween. Get in the habit of drawing the head. It's not hard to keep size, even when you're being loose. Um, so I'm just going to... Everything in this frame seems... Oh, well, what's so special about this, right? He's just done a straight up in between and he's calling it a breakdown. So I'm saving the, the best for last. So let's look at how this leg is, is uh, being... Again, it's on a half, so it's halfway between. So nothing, nothing out of the ordinary here either, right? Everything's just kind of halfway in between, right? Like that. So let's take a look at that. Bum bum bum. Right, everything's kind of just going like that right everything's working right but here's where we make the difference you see now somebody might say okay well maybe he's gonna straighten his leg out like this right that's a straight up thing it works it's not bad right it's pretty good right. and i've gone and used the wrong color so let me just I'm going to use a different color. Let's use black, right? That'll stand out. Or you could say that he does it like this, right? Not as good, but it works, right? All the different ways. But this is what he does, and it's great. Um, inside the body here he's going to kick his leg right up like this it's still arcing right look at the foot the foot is still halfway right you got one hair you got one hair and you got one hair right so it's still halfway but this is the arc this is what it's all about right so then we're going to shoot that that's actually going to go more like that. See, it's it's such a fun shape that I'm not used to making myself, right? It's that I'm having to look at its placement on the body and get it right a few times myself, right? So it's something like this, right? So it comes straight down like this. And it curls back on itself. And that's the foot shape. So he kicks his foot right out like that. Bum. And that gives such a nice extra little thing. And that's what makes that, that's an animator's breakdown, right? Not a, not a software operator's breakdown, right? That's the difference. That's real cartoon animation, right? That's it's not typical. It's not dependent on the what the machine does, right? It's um it's a really fun contrast to what's going on um with the upper body, which is really, you know, bland, right? So let's have a look at that. Right. So we have something like that, right? 
just that right we got the other step to do yet but I'm gonna do one more right I'm gonna do one more breakdown between here and here let's see how we're doing for time one hour oh we got plenty of time um, Frank makes movies how are you um, right so um i'm gonna go between here and here right let's go between here and here and see what happens let's go back right that's a good one because his leg grows his leg grows and distorts now we're gonna keep the head this is interesting the head remains in the profile position so we're going to keep this profile position before it changes right so it's going to come up now i'm going to do a silhouette breakdown here because the silhouette is the best way of managing the arcs and seeing how it all works especially as i'm making reference right to the thing all right and again here I can just half that it's funny as I, I you know I don't want to sometimes I think drawing just a straight line slows me down than a the little bitty bitty strokes because the little bitty bitty strokes just get me more accurately placed that's why a lot of animators draw like that you see because we need to worry about the placement when you see me drawing and illustrating characters or cleaning up i don't do so much of this kind of press pressing what some people call chicken scratch you know but to those illustrators that think they can be derogatory they can't animate you know you need to do some chicken scratching boy then maybe i'll consider you an animator right so the thing is is you got to it's important the reason why i'm chicken scratching is you got to get this line exactly halfway between and i i've got to be fast right i'm not going to be uh, you know i'm not going to be sitting here going oh 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 like this you can do it like that but i've got too much to manage right i just want to speed through this live stream right so that's the reason we do it when you've got 600 drawings to make right not one piddling little drawing where you can shade it in and all that um you gotta use methods that are quick that look rough but you know you can go back and do what the other guy thinks is so special anytime right so again i'm stressing this and using this kind of lingo to stop people from developing bad habits that want to draw as animators right don't be so insecure about what other people say about your work and the way you're drawing they're not going to the store you're going to right they're too busy worrying about one image you know you got a whole world to 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 manage right um that's the difference between animation uh draftsman and illustration draftsman that said you know their illustration draftsman know how to spend time on an image and they're very good at doing one image whereas animators myself included perhaps need to work on that a little bit so that kind of balances it out but the thing is is what do you want out of life you know what is it you want to do because you got to you, you know a person who wants to be a soccer player can find about how a tennis player can change his stance really quickly and swing his racket it's got nothing to do with soccer right so 
yes, animation and illustration can relate, but only like soccer and running, you know, tennis have running in there, you know, different kind of running, different kind of stamina. Now, this has gone into a down position, right? But we're in between into this up fast position, but this leg is delayed and it's come off the ground, but it's keeping its, it's stretching off like this, right? It's almost that there's a little bit still pressed onto the ground of this, but this still is off like this, right? So we have this, bum, 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 bum. So you see the delay on this side. So here we delay coming off the ground, but there's a big move here, right? There's in-betweens, but I'm not going to do the in-betweens. I've just done the breakdowns. So then, then here we delay between here and here, right? And there's a big move here again, right? So delay, delay. This is slowing and slowing out, then sudden change and down. That's the timing of the step. Boom, right? See how that works? And the top is just turning his head like that. It's a bit of volume alteration in the beat. But, you know, truth be told, that's in the actual animation. Right, so um, let's... Uh, and again, that's why it looks great. Um, don't don't be afraid of it. Let's now go on to the next step, right? Let's first all see how we're doing in the chat. Batch tunes, you're going to enjoy this. Um, we're looking at cartoon, real cartoon animation, right? Um, so we're going to go into the next. Um, oopsie. Now, which leg did I start with? I started with that leg. Okay. That's a bit of an annoyance. I started one step too early. Maybe we can... No, okay. No, I didn't. Maybe we can have this position. Yeah, I started one step too early, but it's okay. I can change it up. It, you know, I can change it up. Right. So now I've actually missed a step. I've jumped because I want to get to the I want to get to the good bit, right? We're just going to do two steps. So now we're going to go back to this position, but we're not going to simply go back to this, right? Because the acting has changed, right? He's down lower, right? He's down lower because we're anticipating a fall, right? So now this, this foot is like this. This foot is like this, right? This comes here like this. The tail is up high, it's turned the other way. Bum, 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 bum. Right. Now I'm just going to watch the path of the, um, this thing that he's carrying. Right. So it goes, it goes up, down, up, and down. So it just comes down lower. Everything's just down lower, right? So we got this. Um, this is going to be lower, right? And this, everything here, I'll just rough out where I want the pot. Everything is going to be lower like this. And this thing comes off the back like this like that now we're going back into a more um, profile view so 
So I'm doing a mixture of silhouette and structure, but you can see how loose I am and I'm more concerned about the silhouette, right? Now this is very interesting the way this leg on this side is like that. Maybe I've got his body a little bit too low, so we sort out the volumes there. Right, now I'm just going to quickly go in and scribble, right? Because I'm going to be fast now. Um, and then I'm going to just tidy the drawing up, right? So I'm going to put the middle line here. Put this here like this. Right? This one here like that. This, this. You see those first? We've got a little bit of... Um, fur for feathers coming up not fur and this is going to come down like this right this comes this way i'm just going to keep the keep that fairly straightforward right that's pretty much it Let's get the foot there. Bum, bum, bum. Right. Now we can speed. We can bomb through this, right? So, first things first, let's copy this. Right. Let's yellow this. I'm going to turn off my light box. I'm going to make my key. Now I'm going to just throw in. I'm going to draw a little bit like those guys that I was talking about before because I can now, right? There's a big change up here so I can afford to be a little bit out. We've got a lot of movements that need to be done and I'm not really religiously following what I see right um, because I, I just want to get through the stream and let you guys see the main action of the walk right the drawing is fun but really how many times are you going to watch me drawing this guy, right? So let's just put the tail. And that's not a question I want you to answer. <laughs> let's put this here like this. Okay. We're losing a bit of volume there, but that'll do. It's okay. Um, this comes along the back. So we're going to bend this leg actually I made a slight error there should be bent higher that's it that's it there we go then this one is straight And it curls back on itself. Interesting how the foot is turned outwards on this side. Ah, I know why. I would have thought we would have seen the underside of this foot, right? Which we probably do, right? Hair, right? Right? But we're not seeing it here for a reason, right? Now I'm just going to go and draw the draw the head in. But before I draw the head in, I'm going to blow this guy up a bit. Bring him forward slightly. There we go. That's now to volume, right? So... A beak just comes down like that. A 
very straight up. There we go. Just be a little bit careful with his mouth as he goes into a more profile view. The eyebrow here like this. Uh, he's got a bit of his feathers of coming up again. I think it's all to anticipate what happens to him on the next after this step, right? Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Let's just draw the hand. I forgot the hand. So the hand. Just a shape like this. I divide the fingers in there like that. Let's paste our little friend in. There we go. That'll do. Right. So. We're going to do the next step. So we're going to see how we get from this step to this step. Again, I just, you know, feel I can prop him up just a little bit. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Right. All right. So, um, Red Fox, how are you doing? Hey, Psyka Stevens Okiere. Yeah, good old childhood memories. Yeah, when kids had the real stuff, right? You know, right? So now um, we're going we're gonna to look for the past position between here and here, right? So let's do that. Bum, 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 bum. Now I'm, I'm spoiled for choice here. It's probably this. Interesting how it looks so odd from the other side, but they do it, right? Yeah. It's actually got a, he's actually got a bit of a double bounce going on that I missed in the other step. So I'm going to put the double bounce here. As I slow it down, I see what's happening. It's got a bit of double bounce where they're, they're putting it in squat. They're using pure squash and stretch to get the double bounce. Okay. So I missed that out on the previous one, which is a shame because that makes that, that really gives a, so, so we're going to, since the other, this kick out, this kick out is not, is, is not so interesting on the way back. We'll still do it, but it looks odd because the leg just appears. So I'm going to show you something else on this step. Let's keep this, let's keep this um, video information fact, you know, to really, you know, share with those who want to have the information. Surprisingly, some people don't want this information. They think it's, um, they think it's not, it's not, not so good to learn this stuff uh, and that the new stuff is a better expression as we heard in the chat a little bit earlier. But um, I want to share this stuff because I love it and I truly believe it is great artistry and there's so much hidden beauty in here that you just don't see in the new stuff, which I'm going to disclose with this double bounce, subtle double bounce, subtle double bounce that we see here. So. This is going to be the up position, so his his body's coming up. Um, we're really lingering on the the rear leg here, like this. So this I want to this would be stretched even more actually. So I'm going to bring the body even higher. Right, I want to push that stretch so this would be higher, right? 
like this. But we're keeping the character still a little bit low down as he's balancing himself out, right? The head isn't quite profile. We're going to keep it. The arc is arcing this way. So the bill is going to be here, but we're going to keep. We're going to kind of keep that. Angle, right? I'm going to keep that angle. Now we'll refer to my own drawings for that. I don't want to um, now again this thing they do that I find that weird but anyway bum, 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 bum. yeah that's good that's good right so then so it comes up and it goes down right and it's got to go up again right so it's got to come up before it comes down, right? So we're going to bring those hands up. Now I'm not looking so much because there's, o there's only one place they can go really, right? So looking at that would probably distract me rather than... It. Look at the nice little turn on the head before he turns right okay so now i'm gonna i'm just gonna go and tidy up this drawing right let's just go straight to it let's tidy up the drawing let's um, start with the head i'm gonna keep this head here like this Some of it I'm just kind of like just using my previous drawing to save time. I'm also doing it for myself, right, to get used to the, the model shapes, right. Um, this what I see is very different to what I'm doing here but I'm just making it work for the for the animation that I've got so I'm a little bit out on that head but I'm just tweaking it that's one of the th things about streaming I have to adjust I can't do slow studies I do them for myself off stream right so but this way we all learn together, right? Let's see the hand. The hand's not that great, right? So we'll just have that there like this. Now somebody in the chat said nice bean-shaped body. Yeah. There we go. That. And he, he hides. When he does the follow-through on this thing, he hides it completely I would be tempted to do that but I'm just I, I don't want to be changing any changing things too much I want to learn from these people myself right so that's kind of like why I'm leaving those things in there right now I'm gonna enjoy this squash and this stretched out leg this leg is really stretched out nicely really fun that's kind of flat like that right let's just copy this won't waste any time with that paste that in drag that up there we go all right so that's our midway, right? Bum, 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 right? Now, let's go about, those are our extremes, but there's another 
thing that I think few things that I need to add in here. So let's first put the up position. Um, so let's go back. Let's do it like the way we were doing it. Right. So let's do a silhouette down. Right. This is why a lot of people like the cut out animation because you can see the logic of why they would invent a software to do that because you can see that I'm just kind of more or less keeping the shape constant um, and just in betweening this master shape but the thing is, is it's what happens inside the silhouette often um, and the sudden change ups the, the, that, aren't, that aren't predictable. And then also the little nuances of the way you've drawn the line that give you squash and stretch and things like that. So this foot is now, I'm going to put this halfway, excuse me, as I try to make sense of it. So this is going to come halfway here like this, right? These hands are going to be all halfway. So this is a fairly easy one, right? Even that, can I just put that in there? And it's almost where it needs to be, right? Halfway, which is great, right? Just move it down slightly, right? So that's that, right? And if you wasn't doing... Um, this kind of animation, you know, which is, you know, when you're doing anime uh, um, stuff and it really is just in betweening between two very straightforward keys, then I really do see, yeah, I guess people could use their shape shifting software to, um, to help them out a bit, to save time, to do the factory kind of work but again this is why I love giving these live demos because I, I, I like showing you um, why the drawing is so important and then also saying well this is probably where you would some people would think now there's a bit of a head growth going on there um, but maybe that's fine when we see it moving because it's all about cheating perspective. I'm going to leave it in for now because I've got bigger fish to fry. Um, and I want to tackle the double bounce thing. So I'm going to have that there like this. See, he's changing his head angle to be honest that head might not need no i think that'll work when you watch it in motion yeah you watch it in motion it's fine um it's another thing to remember about volumes you know it's when to cheat to change right okay but this walk is in between so it is something that it needs to be thought about and I, I'm going to change it because I, I don't like it. But we can see how the other step is working. You see that stretch in the back leg, which is great. So what I'm going to do on this head here is I'm not going to rely so much on the light box, right? Because it doesn't really do that right I'm gonna favor the position and then bring it down into that first I will okay We'll do something like that. And then we'll turn the head this way.
this is where you go, I, I've got to stop looking at the screen now and pay attention to the shapes that I have that's it that's it this is why flick flipping is infinitely better All right That'll do. That's enough, right? So it's better than what it was before. So again, that kind of illustrates the point of why all this, um, you know, it log it logic would have you want to just use those shapes and things and slide in and out of position. Um, but in reality, um, as it's hand drawn, it's organic. And your a lot of hand drawn stuff is is your kind of cheating dimension and perspective with your lines to create the impression of an angle, and a lot of these characters are you know they don't they don't, they're not logical if you were to make them a three d model um and when you do make them three d models they don't look as good. Right, so now we're going to go between, we're going to now break this down, right? So I'm going to go and go and go back here again and go back into that interesting double bounce thing that we had. Yeah. Yeah, it was this position that I want. It was this position. Yeah. So I'm going to add an in between here because I think it's just amazing, right? So we're going to. Just drop that down some, like a favor. Maybe not a favor, that's risking it. It's a cycle. So I have to think logically how, how to make this work, right? How they made it work. His foot are sliding a little bit on the ground as he walks off the background, but it's okay. Um, it doesn't affect it too much. So there's this nice so i'm doing this like one third along the way to in between it with thirds right so this is gonna be like this everything here is gonna be along a third right so everything else is kind of like a straight up third in between a third means like instead of halfway I'm in betweening one third away from this frame okay not the next frame the previous frame right if you were gonna do it closer to the next frame you would say two thirds right two thirds of the way away that's how you get good at timing right by understanding what some people call spacing, right? Timing and spacing, right? Often talk it together. What that essentially is, is the law of slowing in and slowing out, right? So when you say timing and spacing, you literally are talking animation law, right? So then this foot comes here so we're really kind of you see that nice little bounce he has there in this step it's nice right so this has got to be two-thirds of the one-third of the way as well right everything is one-third of the way hopefully you're enjoying this video um, I'm certainly enjoying doing this uh, 
breakdown. I haven't done an animation breakdown study for a while, um, as I've been very busy on my own project. I'm building a new course for the training library called the Pro Archive, and I'm doing an extremely involved dialogue scene that has a lot of pencil mileage on the drawing shall we say right so I'm just gonna do a few strokes here to gesture these rough lines I'm not right so that's my first okay let's break down that I've got hair like this right so we're missing we're missing the other you see that nice little kind of bounce we've got in that step there so it's not in the other one but I put it in that one it actually is in the other one but I put it in that one now I've got I'm going to put my other breakdown between here and here and what I might do is, is just throw in one extra breakdown uh, because I wanted to illustrate that double bounce very slight double bounce that he has um, but first we're going to do the flip side of this where we just kick that leg out right and it's interesting because the spacing on this leg kick out is very very um actually it's higher than that so I'm going to go in here looking at the. I'm trying not to change the animation too much. So I'm just going to half this, right? Maybe I shouldn't be halving it, right? That's one thing. I shouldn't be halving it because it's it's got a lot of in-betweens. But I'm halving it. You know, maybe, maybe some of it should be on thirds, really, to, to be very honest with you. Um, but because I'm going through the basics, the bare bone basics of what makes this walk interesting um, to you guys, let me just get my leg position correct. Um, I'm, I'm having to just focus on these poses, right? So you can understand the um the essentials of what makes this work right and then you know if you want depending on your skill level as i said i have people who have actually worked at disney we had somebody getting frustrated with me for saying that the the new ducktails and the new dark wing duck is no good and it's inferior to this stuff um but here's the thing i've got people who've worked for the new disney shows joining my training library to learn this stuff you have to ask yourself why all right so now i forgot the reason the real reason i was bringing that guy up um uh because maybe it just brings it just proves my point right no yeah the real reason i was bringing that guy up is is we got a vast range of people watching my streams you know some of you are amateurs hobbyists and beginners and i love helping you guys and some of you are graduates um from cal arts uh, bluth university um, animation mentor even so some of you people have come out from these places so you'll be a little bit more savvy about some of the things I'm telling you so you can go and make s studies um, on your own and then re revise the timing that that I'm suggesting here because I've just gone for the straight halves um, to get the to get my point across right of of the fundamentals of what's going on right so maybe if you was to strictly frame by frame it you'd say well 
actually maybe that might be two thirds or that might be a third or something else. So, you know, take this as like a, a guide of things to look out for, essentials to look out for, but not necessarily the the actual carbon copy of the walk that I'm studying because it's deceptively, you know, it looks simple and it is for the most part, you know, uh, can I do that? Yes, I can. Um, but it's, it's a lot more involved than one would think, shall we say. All right. Now, we have got our, yeah, that nice little kick in his back leg looks good. But I'm going to add the, the, the breakdown between there and there because it's a little harsh when we look at it without the breakdown. It's going to need it. So let's do that. How are we doing for time? Okay, 1 hour 25. We're getting through this a lot quicker than I thought. Um, bum, bum, bum. We've got an animation teacher online. Don't worry about your English. Um, uh, it's not my interest is the animation flow, not the software. I would like to know for best orientation. For this much, my student is making a presentation uh, project. Okay, well, my advice would be to look at the extremes, which is watch this video. We've gone from one step to the other step, which is an extreme. Now, if I really was doing this, I'd then have gone to this one, right? These are the extreme poses. Then we go from the, then, uh, then we kind of go halfway in between, which is the other extreme, because he's extreme, extreme up position here. Then we want to go in here and we want to kind of break it down with key positions. And then we want to break those key positions down with breakdown drawings, right? Like this one. And we're going to do a breakdown drawing now. So we're going to look at this and this, this and this. And we need to do a, find the breakdown between there, right? Now I could do that myself, but we're making a study of... Um, of an animation, a great animation. Uh, so I'm just going to look at their breakdown. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Now I'm going to have to change it up a little bit because um, I kind of cheated. I, I missed a, I missed a cycle so I could get to the next bit of the animation where he falls over. Um, I just wanted to look at the the kind of action that he has. Right, so all of this I'm going to put halfway, right? And even this I'm going to put halfway, which it might not necessarily be, right? Um it's probably going to be a third of the way, so let's do that. I'm going to put his foot a third of the way there, right? Because we want to linger on that. Um, double bounce position that we have there. Like that. Now, we're going to bring this all the way up higher, actually. I'm going to come like that. Interesting, nice, nice shape. So you see how this shape grows up and we create the foot out of that like that. And then we kind of squash and stretch and join it in a convincing way. You see it's almost rubber hose, but we find the joint and we try and keep the same amount of mass and it creates an illusion that it is um, 
that it somehow, um, you know, deforming correctly. And that's the beauty of hand-drawn animation. It's all, it's the art of balancing the illusion, right? The art of balancing the illusion. Everything is, you know, It's like a, ma a real magic show, you know, a sudden change up. Get them looking at something, but then give them a sudden change up. Now, my problem with what I was calling the push button automated 2D software style animation is, is it's not a magic trick to me. It's obvious, you know, um, when they're doing the change up it's obvious when they're doing the the sliding and snapping of the shapes and it just looks bland and boring and uninteresting and everybody moves the same way um character animation is called character character animation character defines certain characteristics character traits of a character so that's a, that's what we're missing in today's 2D, right? Arguably 3D as well, but that's what we're missing. Everybody moves and gestures in the same bland, boring, unoriginal way. Um, Donald Duck had his own character, you know? The way he moved, he was raging. Everybody can even, you know, human beings can mimic the way he jumps up and down and fla frail flays his fists, you know. That's real character animation, right? It's purely him. Nobody else really does it. And when they do it, it's like, oh, he's doing Donald Duck, right? He's doing Donald Duck. It's not, he's impersonating an animated character. The character is so strongly def defined. That's what real character animation is. But everybody just does the same little skit nowadays. Right, okay, so now we have that, right? So we've completed the walk. And see, can you see that nice little action in that that little bounce there? When I scrub it, you can really feel that boom, right? So we can see that going on there. Arguably, I feel his head could have come up and down more, but I put a head turn on his head there, which is okay, right? His head does start a bit big here, right? And it gets smaller and smaller. So just for the sake of it, again, this is all rough. I need, and I actually started out with it at the right size, to be very honest with you. I needn't, needn't fuss about this, but let's do it. All right. Bum, bum. Yeah, there we go. That's, uh, that's a little better, right? So he walks right and now we're going to go into the fall position right where he falls over um, so we've got that okay so now everything changes so I'm gonna kind of Right. Okay. Interesting. I'm studying what's happening. So the body and thing turn. Okay. So I'm picking my keys here. Right. Suddenly it's going to be a lot difficult, harder, right? So his body kind of stays in the same position, right? It just drifts a little bit 
forward, right? But then this all comes down like this. Now his foot angle changes, right? And this foot turns out this way, right? The tail goes round the back. This upright thing is still very much straight, right? So we have something like this now. Let's put that a little bit lower and get the mass working there. All right. So we get a slight turn in his head here. Now we're getting used to his mouth shape. Right. Get a slight turn in his head. I'm just going to go and pick out, go. Uh, sort of like um, frame advancing these and pick out what I think are the keys and just tidy them up as I go. I think we're almost one and a half hours done in this. No, almost two hours in. So we've got, you know, the last, you know, we can make this around about a three hour stream. We can do the fall action as the last little bit right so we got this now I'm just gonna tidy this up a little bit right so This is what's going to really make the previous walk even more fun, right? And notice how we're keeping the, even though he's starting to fall, remember what I said earlier, um, the top half is not reacting yet, right? We're kind of saving that. That's another thing to note about comedy, cartoon timing, cartoon action, action. So even though his legs have had this big trip, right? We're really kind of saving the timing so this goes this goes straight down and then the back bean body the weight distribution is like this with the tail here like that okay right now we've got the legs splayed and now here our here we saw the insole of the foot on this step and on this step we didn't for the reason that they wanted to create some change up to indicate 
the slipping. There we go. You see now another reason why doing walk cycles is so so good is the walk really helps you familiarize yourself with the character's locomotion. So now as I'm now as I'm making this guy move, it's a whole lot easier for me um to do that let's just put that there like that yeah that'll do um as i've kind of like gotten better at his model along the way right still loose still rough okay so we've got that now we're going to find the next position this one right so what happens? The head and the body come up, but there and the thing comes in. Okay, interesting, right? Um, right. So this still, he's still milking the timing, comedy timing, right? So even though he's slipping, right? Let's just quickly get the face down now so I don't waste any time. Right. Can just tidy that up very easily. When time comes for that. Right. Now arguably I think he needs to be even taller, right? Let's move him more forward here like this. It's on a cycle, so I'm going to keep him on the spot. Right. Now the body. Is coming this way. Like this. Need to be careful with the yeah with the angle of that. And the foot is still angled back on itself, right? So everything's like this. Man, this is this is what I've been waiting for, right? I kinda know walks inside out, but I'm glad. Now look at this. Look at the change up shape between here and here. Superb. Um, the bow tie would be here. This would be here like this. The hands come in on themselves. Finally, we change up the position on this thing. That's a nice hand. Like that. Still kind of together though. And this thing turns inward like this. More perhaps. There we go. Boom. Yeah, so you see the slide occurs here like this. There are in betweens, and I may just put the rough in betweens because they have to be, they have to be had. I'm going to sort out the face issue. Right, let's tidy this drawing up. Be as quick as. We can. So I'm going to half be looking. I'm looking at that more for animation. And now I'm kind of just sticking with my kind of rough 
drawing of Donald, which is there, but not really there. You know, it's right, but not right. You know, it could, could be more accurate. But as I said, there's so much great information to be garnered from this that I think you guys will forgive me if I'm a little bit off on the face. Right, so this... around here like that now the sudden change up the opposing action the legs are coming forward the arms are going backwards right so that's kind of stuff that people in the training library will be very familiar with um, that, that I'm always talking about opposing actions It's just, we don't really see his hands through there. Yes, we do a little bit. Um, and you see how the squash and stretch is occurring, but only at the bottom. And how the squash and stretch is not, like people think, oh, cartoons. So that, you know, again, they don't really practice how to draw properly in this day and age. So they don't really think about, good appealing drawing squash and stretch that relates to the previous drawing they just have these super manked deformed things you know some people like to talk about smear frames which are you know really half fast stretch poses um time your work nicely draw nice squash and stretch and the, everything has their place. The place for a smear frame will be there, but you'll be depending a lot less on them and your work will look a lot nicer, particularly to the beginners out there. Now I'm doing the underside of his feet so you can kind of see what's happening there, right? So let's just see what that looks like with those few frames that have been added, right? So he's walking along, right? Suddenly the slip occurs, right? Just a sudden change up the splay of the legs. Boom. Like that. Okay. Right. How are we doing for time? Um, Okay, not much going on in the chat. That's good. We everybody's either just watching, so that's good. Like we can get on with it, right? Um, I try to involve you guys when I can. Okay, so let's. Then, oh, that's a nice breakdown that I may have to keep. We got to kind of straight ahead these things now. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm not going to straight ahead it yet. I'm going to do every, because every drawing counts here. All right. So now we're on the ground, right? Now we're on the ground. And the hand, so the body comes down. What do the arms do? They go up, right? Opposing action. Right. And notice how there's this not over the top squash and stretch, by the way. So, well, you can't notice that yet, but <laughs> when I draw it in, you'll notice it, right? So now this foot comes where the other foot was, right? And this foot is here like that. Let me just heavy that foot in. I'm thinking about the silhouette. It doesn't look like I am, but believe me, I am. Right. This now is pointing the other way because it's the other foot. Um, 
I'm being super sketchy so I can just tidy it up very quickly. I know my drawings. I know how to tidy up fast when I do things like this, right? So then this comes up this way like that. The arm. This thing has changed its shape now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to yellow it. I'm going to move it up to where I think it should be. About there. All right. Good. Now we'll just draw it in red. So this thing is now straight. So we've kind of changed it just ever so slightly. Comes like that. Now we've got, oopsie, his beak is hair. Meaning his neck is hair like this. So his beak is hair. His head is just going to be around the beak, right? That's the construction of the character. Right? His eye is hair. His other eye is hair. I don't really, haven't really talked about the construction of his head. I've got lots of videos on those things, right? So his eyebrows are open. Comes around. Truth be told, I don't really rely much on it anymore it's all buried in the sub right so he's fallen down and he's quite tall in the fall down I don't want to shrink him down too much but I'm going to ah, shut up wrong one there I'm gonna put that there like that there That'll do. All right, now I'm going to tidy this drawing up. All right. I'm going to turn off the light box because it really doesn't count. All right. So we're going to have this and this. Again, when we're doing the extremes, right? It really doesn't, you know, I can be a little bit more definite with my strokes because I don't have to worry too much about the drawing relating as much, right? Because there's a radical change, right? So we can... Just say, okay, this is completely different, right? So we can now have that on here like this. Like this. There we go. And the stretch. Now the hand is still grasp grasping it with the bottom two fingers together like that. It's probably more a straight line. Now the head is just a circle. I, I don't really want to, I just want to keep it clean. So I think you saw me draw the circle, All right? So then the eyes kind of sit halfway along the circle or two-thirds possibly and then the bill lines it up right and this is the first time in the scene where he's opened his eyes right so they've really kind of milked the, the timing like even though he slipped for those first few slip frames that he has um they haven't been in a hurry to open his eyes and make him go, ah, oh, like that. They've really savored it, had his feet sliding around a bit, you know. Right, that'll do. That'll do. Bum, 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 bum. 
that's nice you see the slide the sudden change slide like that All right let's keep going I'm just seeing how much of this is left Oh wow, we got a lot. Am I going to get through that in an hour? We'll see. Okay, right. Okay, now next we've got this foot there's a new cycle going on right as he's sliding forward this is coming further back See the tail going away in there this foot comes up off the ground like this this foot comes down and I've got to be sure to have it all in the line with each other for the pose all right so I'm going to be very very quick so I can just speed through it all right so we got that sudden slip change up timing happening there see an underside of a sweater the arms are coming back on themselves so he's trying to save the um the fish bowl right it's funny his collar is very much here So the circle of the head would be here. You'd have his beak. Here. You got a half of his eye here. His eye is fully open now. As we come back on it like that. Now I'm going to turn this over. So his hand is snapping in the middle of this thing now. There. All right, now let's talk about this drawing. You see, I was going to do the breakdown between hair and hair, but I don't have to because now we're putting this leg in the air and it's we're seeing the sudden change up in the other other leg slipping like that um, so it's okay we can just go straight to it so this is almost acting like now we can see what's happening with the leg here right it's coming up on itself i've got a kind of like i'm gonna kind of ignore the actual drawing now because i need to be fast there's so much of this um, I'll look at it for the squash and stretch of the leg, but for the rest of the character, uh, not really, right? So, um, and for this section here. So the tail, um, it's like this. Now, we want the silhouette to be all in one line right that's one of the secrets to, to getting nice poses right 
with these kind of drawn animated characters. And unfortunately, you had the guy early trying to defend that new awful square block. You know, this character was designed to be drawn by artists. The new Darkwing Duck or DuckTales or whatever crap that they've put out there now is not designed to be drawn by an artist. It's designed to be moved around by software. It's a big clunky shape that doesn't give the opportunity to have these things that I'm talking about, like the silhouette um, shapes. The you know they have silhouettes, but so does a a big hunking steaming turd. You know, so I mean everything has a silhouette, but the little nuances that I'm talking about, you know, that um, that make cartooning great because it's it takes skill it takes you know not only do you have to know how to draw you have to know how to you know balance appealing shapes so that they harmonize with each other to just even for like a split second like this frame you just it's it's over really quick blink and you'll miss it but when you freeze frame it and you draw it, you say, my God, what a pose, right? What an amazing pose. It's the kind of pose that a cartoonist would, you know, dream about wanting to wanting to, to draw. It's got so much appeal, so much um, life in, the, in it, you know. I'm kind of getting his head a little bit small and there, but... It's so fast that I don't care. Right. Well, I care just a little bit enough to tweak it. You know, let's blow it up slightly. Oopsie. You want that. There. Bum, 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 bum. Right. So now we see where we're going with this. Right. Let's continue. How are we doing in the chat? Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Go Iso. Uh, I see people talking about technique, not software. Yes. My channel is all about the... Now, I'm going to have to do that frame. Maybe I can miss out the next frame. Yeah. I'm going to miss out a key and do a breakdown. I'll miss out an extreme and do a key. I would call this all keys and extremes. Okay. So now this is bent, but we're going to straighten that out like that. Right? Bum, bum. Now, this is squash and stretch happening here. It doesn't seem to be stretching. You know, I'm not stretching him like that. You know? Um, it's enough. And this is the kind of stuff why I'm studying this to do Darkwing Duck justice. You know, I think that person has long gone because they weren't... Maybe, if, maybe their hair... They, they can see what I meant. But like... This kind of character is meant to be squashed and stretched in a certain way. Um, and not many people know how to do that nowadays. They really don't, you know. And the way they, they, they're designed now, forget that, you know. There is virtually no squash and stretch. Um, there's free transform deformations, right? But that ain't squash and stretch. Um, so we can see what's happening like look at that like it's just a circular action but it's just so much fun right um, in the tail we've got there and it's still still the arm is delayed 
that's just great um, so I'm going to make sense of this head right the head is a circle coming back on itself the eye comes in here this is super f super funny as well what's what happens right the mouth comes to the side even though his, his head is going to be obscured I'm just roughing it in quickly so we can see that right And we're just keeping those arms. So look at the comedy timing of how those arms are just staying in the air while all that crazy stuff is happening. So the, the thing is still happening as he's walking along here. Um, the top section is very, very straight compared to the, the nice bouncy legs. But then, whoa, right? But then even though even then, the, the top, he's holding that thing really carefully to try and stay in balance with that he's getting progressively smaller as i go which is why we needed we would have probably had to do uh you know if i was tying this down i would go and do the um pose to pose a lot better um and make sure that his volumes were constant but um you know it, it's all it's all readable you can see you can see what's happening and more importantly you can see the theory behind the the action um this no we don't want that let me here's a here's a good way of doing it let's just do that let's bring that now this let's bring that forward there like that there we go let's turn it like that um right so what's actually happening here and what i didn't know was he it had water inside um inside it so we now have some water that's sprinkling out of this thing right which makes it even funnier right okay now I've got to just consolidate this drawing so big swooping line for the squash and stretch this goes up a bit now notice how this is all kind of in the same line here right like that then we've got this so already I'm kind of like getting a lot more familiar with the kind of shape choices see i would have thought that i knew how to draw like this anyway which i kind of do right but this kind of cartooning is a skill in itself right so the things that i kind of know i don't really do to this level because i don't really spend time drawing or studying this stuff which is why i'm doing this today i do a very as I said, more cartoon, cartoon realism about 50-50, um, 50, 50, 50 cartoon and 50 realism. So I would, I'm not like more to the realism, but I'm still very much cartoon, but i got a lot of an anatomy based. Like my style is like Aladdin, Jasmine sort of characters. So this kind of um, cartooning classic cartooning is something that really you know i think a lot of people just because like oh yeah the five minute cartoon that i used to watch when i was a kid nowadays today's generation don't even know they just don't even know like we had that guy before 
talking about the new stuff as if it's even in the same league you know um it just isn't you know it's just a fact it's not even trying to be mean it's just not in the same league <laughs> it's just no way shape or form but so that's why i'm doing what i'm doing here um i'm kind of like sharpening my skills by studying this stuff but at the same time making you guys aware of what you know um master animators or anybody who's who's like been around and understands animation before the cg revolution where it all came from where its roots are um, and the roots are important because they're the foundation once you cut off the roots it starts to become weak and that's what's happened you know cartoon animation is virtually dead in 2d so i'm here getting better at it myself and hopefully opening some of your eyes at, to what it actually is because it ain't adventure time it ain't bojack horseman and it certainly ain't what disney are doing with mickey mouse and donald duck and ducktales and rescue rangers today certainly not right that's not cartoon animation it's not even um looney tunes space jam 2 that's not even cartoon animation right this this is right what i'm studying here um okay so now he's that wow this is crazy this is absolutely crazy so now he stands up right so notice how the line changes it's just a line like this and the line is changing now as he stands up you can really see how the guy is working his pose to pose really cool and this is this thing keeping on is this thing just i'm just gonna watch his yeah his head's continuously going back on itself so it's all like this and this are all kind of static right because th this guy is very much about the the strong drawing pose this is like a this is like a this 1950s donald duck is like a marriage of the strong chuck jones angular poses with the flowing disney action you know um of the of the older donald duck cartoons personally i i have to say i i do like the way the older ones moved even more but i think this this is a lot um maybe i can do that no i can't we'll just do what we did before we're gonna lose the form a bit of this thing but i don't think nobody cares right um Let's turn it this way. Bum, 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 bum. We can make it a little bit smaller. It's all right. Um, right. The head continues to go back on itself. See, I would have been making his head like looking at it like that and and all that, but it takes away from the actual joke like he he's it's too fast there, there's only like one in between between each drawing that i'm making by the way right and those in betweens are like pretty major things happening they're not straight up in betweens right so 
it's worth looking at this scene yourself um, if you're interested in this live stream and seeing how the gaps are filled in because I don't have time to do the the intermediate so I'm picking my frames so you see how he folds and stands back up again that's that's really cool um, okay so I'm gonna just consolidate this drawing how are we doing for time two hours 26 not bad Vladimir Putin Russia is live is from India wow <laughs> that's an interesting name from India um, okay now let's just these are pretty simple they're all kind of together we got a bit of the bow tie coming in under there and we taper that line slightly and it's happening not quite there yet but as i get more and more familiar with the model you see how much faster and cleaner the drawing gets right I still scribble and scrap sc scrap out where I want it but once you start to familiarize yourself um, with the model and that's how animators become fast so all this talk of you know the software speeds things up you know, while somebody's looking for the li right library shape to make their weird animation, sliding animation work because they can't draw the face. I'll have drawn the, you know, virtually the whole pose in that time. That's why I want to really do the continue doing these live demos to encourage people who are interested in drawing to answer their calling to be to do real animation hand drawn animation to become special because that's what you are when you draw your animation um, one of the great things that people are missing about the whole AI thing is is human beings like to feel pride whether some people say pride is a bad emotion, everything in excess is bad. But human beings like to take pride in things that they have done, that they have accomplished. When something becomes as piss easy as farting in the wind, right? Um, you, you know, nobody cares anymore. So I really love the whole AI animation thing because you got people out there thinking that animation is just about doing jobs. No, it isn't. It's an art form. It's, it's passion. It's art. It's creativity. So they're only thinking at it, oh, now there'll be no need for people to do animation. You know, AI is here at the push of a button. People are saying, oh, it's not there yet. Well, it will get there. It will get there. Make no mistake, right? But don't fear it because understand what you are. You're, a, you're somebody that wants to do something of worth. You want to feel special. You, and there's nothing wrong with that. You want to feel that you, you can do something. Look what I can do. Everybody, it's innate. A child wants to do it. That's not childish. That's the basic human trait. So... Pick up the pencil, pick up the tablet or whatever and draw and learn to draw it because your time, you know, if it's not now, it will come. Trust me. You'll get the recognition you thoroughly deserve for doing something that most people can't do. Right. Right, so there we go. That's what the push button 
few don't want they don't want people they for a little while they got away with it you know they got away with cancelling hand-drawn animation they got away with cancelling artists they made it something for the ordinary celebration of the ordinary no well everything moves in circles right now we're moving towards the special again right and your hour is upon you seriously right let's now move on to the next pose oh now I would love to do that frame but I can't um, it's that one that one actually he's got his foot this way turns this way like that um, yeah now there's another very important frame but I can't really fit it in so I gotta just turn it turn it on itself I've got to make out what I've got to do here. Maybe I can do that. No. It's a slow end. Let's just do this one. Um, right, so. Goes down now. Now, now the, the path is changing as this has reached its kind of peak point so I'm watching the path of the hands right it kind of straight there like that um, oopsie the head is kind of staying where it is maybe it's moving in on itself i'm just doing i'm, I'm making i'm accommodating with the head it's not quite doing what you know so This is like this. This foot's completely gone this way. Now there's a really nice frame that I've had to leave out, but I'm just going to you know that's the problem we got that that works though like that you know still works um, and then the uh, this thing so it there like that Okay, I'm going to look at the chat, see if anybody has anything of any interest to talk about. But here we can see we're just keeping the feet on a circular arc that keeps it kind of moving. So he stands up, he stands, he drops to his butt, he stands, but then he drops to his butt again, right? That's the way it works. Um, my pleasure um, Frank makes movies um, Daniel Ferraz you've still got a fair amount I'm going to see this thing through this is what we've been doing We've been studying a classic Donald Duck, so he's walking 
and he trips. What I might do is off stream, I'll adjust his size so that I'll shrink him down in the cycle so he manage it, he s sticks to the size of the of the trick of the trip. Because it's almost like two different pieces of animation, but we're tying it together like that. Um, but we're going to continue on with this. Are we doing in the chat? There we go. Um, all right, now we need to look at uh, this frame now. Yeah, we need to put this frame on to tidy this up a little bit so we just basically find our shapes and they all sit inside the silhouette you see the that's the beauty of understanding this stuff because even though like the duck has got progressively smaller from when we studied the cycle and like I'm looking at the screen and I'm eyeballing the keys because of the whole silhouette thing and understanding of shape simplification there is no real volume issue that can't be really easily fixed by just changing the increasing the size of the um, the entire character so there's no like warping bodily features you know all of that is sorted out and that's what that's that's where you want to be when you get good at this because another thing that a lot of people spend a lot of time fretting over and finding difficult is honestly one of the simplest things is volume control you know once you understand shapes and the shape language all of these things are tweaked very easily tweaked because everything is is um been worked out as a like the duck's got his own formula so his his head to bill ratio his um well we don't see that eye you know it's all vir virtually all the same so let's have the arm up here like this hopefully you're enjoying the stream because I'm certainly enjoying drawing it right um, right so the water is splashing on his head now I'm kind of like not really playing paying much attention to that what I am going to do, what I've noticed here, is he could be a little bit taller there. Right. There we go. Pum, 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 pum. So he's standing up again, but he's ready to fall down again. Right. Right. Um... Let's keep going. Oh, that's interesting. I might want to keep that. Now, how many? Yeah, we got to keep that. Yeah. 
So there's barely any movement here. Um, it's annoying, but it has to be. I have to favor this key here. So we got to stretch. Coming like this. And this bends in like that. It's a little bit too much. That's more like it. So again, you see how it's just one drawing close and another drawing close and then Actually, what needs to be is he dropping down more? Yeah, he'll be dropping down more And I'm just literally just gonna eyeball this Because there's hardly any movement here So I've got to stick with what I've got This is like a favor, but not on the feet. So I can kind of just be very quick with this one and straight clean. Virtually using the light box here. I would never really want to cut it out doing this kind of animation. I would rather rather have a slight volume issue than have it looking so dead and cut out. Right. Just rush the water spray. I'm not so concerned about that. So there we can see the change in the foot happening. Let's see. Keep that like that. Pum, pum, pum. Now we're going to have a big change. Wow, man. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do the next one. It's frustrating because we're now moving on to the realm of straight ahead. We are now moving on to the realm of straight ahead. There's not much I can do about it. It's gotta be done. So what's going on with his body here, actually? Okay, it's coming up on itself. Here it is coming up on itself. So not much. Actually, there is. There's a little bit of change going on in the head it's moving into a three quarter so I'm gonna have to just kind of draw his head in as the model and he's blinking here so this is a way to see his blink we cut into the eye there like that Yeah, that's the head, the bow tie will be up here like this, so I'm kind of figuring out what's happening, 
as I'm kind of ma trying to manage this straight ahead in a kind of clean way. Um, okay, this foot has now kicked out to the ground. Like that. We're going to have to tidy that up. I don't care about tidying the feet up. The feet's where it's all happening, right? And it's all kind of kicking up. This foot's now kicking up out this way. You see how we're kind of like having this sh kind of triangle shape for the foot to get to manage these bold sudden changes, right? And this comes down like that. The arms are going back on themselves. that okay we've got his tail now in the shot there's a rug on the floor that's been kicked about but I'm not doing that okay what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to make a nice tracing of this so we don't get to Um, stupid with that thing. Let's keep that there like that. Probably put that a little bit more there and make that work. Okay. The water is all bouncing off him. Right, now I'm going to tidy this up. How are we doing for time? Oh. It looks like... Um, it looks like we've got... Uh, almost to the three hour mark, but I'm going to keep going. Because I think it's worth it. I really do. I don't think you guys will mind. Those of you who do, you can always just leave. You know? And the beauty is, is if you're interested and you can't stay, you can always catch the stream later. And watch it in double speed. You know? That's what I do. A lot of the times. Of course, I wouldn't recommend watching my training lectures in double speed unless you've been through them a few times. Um, but these videos, you know, I'm going as quick as I can. And that means sometimes I'm being a lot quieter than usual. Well, that's okay. I think what you're seeing is kind of self-explanatory. I've got to keep these drawings a little bit tidy or you see it's one thing losing when you're doing this kind of demo work what I'm doing at the moment I'm just giving you tips but it's almost a demo really there's one thing about being loose and rough and the whole character getting smaller like what's here but we don't want the proportions to start going off right so we want to we want to keep on model a little bit. So when I tweak it and change it, 
that's okay we can just make it big so you see the timing of that that's really quite nice so even though we're missing a lot of essential frames I, I don't want to call them in-betweens and see that that slip suddenly starts to come to life as he slips and he puts the puts the um, water on his head right um. Bum, 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 bum. Biffer Pop draws. My pleasure. My pleasure. Looks like Centron has gone. All right, now let's do the next pose. Maybe we, we, we can miss that frame. I really don't want to miss that frame, but... I've got to get through this. It's an essential frame, but they're all kind of essential. The essential kick up. Mm. Yeah, I guess I guess I'll have to. No, maybe not. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to miss the good stuff. So this is about real cartoon animation, but in a, in a sense, I'm missing some of the things that really make it real to um, to get it done in time. Um, but that's okay. It'll you'll you know even the, the thing is as I'm talking to myself as somebody who who really understands animation at a very high level so don't worry what i'm showing you is still the it's important stuff it's just there's always like the thing about quality disney animation back in the day when disney could actually animate you know um the there was always something extra in there so even if you'd have really high grade movement their breakdowns and their keys and their everything were just so rich that you know you just miss a lot of stuff you could just miss a lot of this stuff all right oh well onwards we go so this head, let's stick to the head construction of the character, right? Since a lot of him's obscured by his arms. Put the beak at the bottom, right? Got one eye there, and the other eye there. Now he's kind of blinking. his eyes the arms are coming back on themselves I've kind of done, done, gone a little bit off track with these arms But you see how they're just straight lines and then you start chiseling into them. And they become something else. That is what his hand shape is like. So I'll leave it. Um, I'm just making the spot work. I'm not really, I may, I may not really be religiously following that because I'm straight aheading this now. Um, there's more coming splashing over him.
Right. Let's just very quickly tidy this. Bum, bum, bum. So I'm going to do this kind of foot shape here to, as we have this sudden directional change, that gives it a bit of follow through, overlap and drag. Drag rather, also in the realms of squash and stretch. Um, the tail comes up off the ground. Right along there like this. Now these feet have turned inwards to us. Like that. I don't really say much about it because there's not really much to say at the moment. Um, the sudden, you know, it's the same timing thing, you know. Stick around on here and then I have a sudden change. Right? Boom. Just enough to see it. Now there are more frames. Um, there are definitely more frames that are actually making this better they're not just in betweens as I said it's it's um it's really painful because I know that I I don't want the stream to go on for like six hours right so I'm being as quick as I can and just really skimping out I know it looks like I'm spending time on the drawing but I'm really not you know and just speeding through this thing as fast as I can. Right. When I see something worthy of note, I'll point it out to you as I have been doing. Um, I'm just doing anything for the water there. It is kind of that shape. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. It's actually a challenge making sure that these arcs all line up straight ahead. That's why I'm a little bit quiet. When you're working straight ahead like this. Um, Ennio's son, you're quite right. Save. <laughs> there we go, right. Now, where are we? Okay. We're going to bring this guy up. Now inside the silhouette is the foot, right? The foot has come this way, right? And it's come like that. Now this is, this is going straight. Really strong, just strong drawings coming up like that. See, the funny thing is, is Enio's son in the chat says, don't forget to save. I do this kind of stuff off stream many times. This is like a morning workout to me sometimes. And I never save it. I just say, okay. Let's learn something about such and such. I save it, but I save it in the, the hard disk of my subconscious, right? Or the cloud, the cloud. The subconscious is more like a cloud, you know. Save it in that.
because ultimately like this isn't my animation it's nothing for me to you know funnily enough when i make um shares of on social media like linkedin or um instagram or things like that people love this stuff so it, it doubles up as good social media thing but i don't want to be the guy who knows who's just known for boasting other people's animation and studying it you know i i like to inspire you guys to do that because that's a great way you can learn and get good but let's not fall under any illusions you know about who did who who the real artist is you know the person who did this work you know there were three animators names listed i didn't recognize any of them um at the beginning of this short but each and every one of them you know i would say has more talent and skill in their little fingernail than today's very best at pixar that's my personal feeling um so here we have the uh, the water splashing off them. Um, there we go. That in itself is a pretty nice drawing, but. Um, We'll still tidy it up because that's what we do. Um, let's move that there. I've got to manage the the action. There's still stuff pouring from this. Stream. My drawing kind of does does the job, but it'll just, you know, unfortunately because of the regularities. Here you get to we get to consolidate anyway, so we get to look at the squash and stretch shapes. Sometimes I like to clean it up anyway for myself because you get to learn how to choose the choose your line because you know roughs all look good anyway like you know the simpsons is absolutely sh shit drawing right rugrats simpsons all that classy tupo shit um but the thing is even when you look at rough pencil line work of that um it looks pretty good because roughs look good right the real one of the real skills is is knowing how to um, choose your lines. So we got that. Oopsie. And you see, because we understand his formula or construction or whatever you want to call it, it's not really that difficult to keep him to form. Right. What I'm going to do with all this stuff is, is just keep that. That'll save me time. There we go. There. Excellent. How much more of this have we got? Like, what are we doing for time? Three hours, 11 minutes. Um...
Not bad. I might end it when he lands on the floor. He then, because after he lands on the floor, he then flies out of shot. I might end it when he lands on the floor. So we got this. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that one. It's funny how they all come together at that one pivot point. Oh, that's pretty cool. So these arms are like the pivot point here, right? So now the head evens up. I think the arms, the head kind of evens up here. We keep at that three quarter angle. The head kind of evens up there. The body becomes this shape, right? So let's look at the shape, right? The squash and stretch in the arms now. Like that. See people's people when I see people like scrolling through social media or watching all these things on Netflix, I really don't I personally don't understand it. Like three hours to me has just like where did it go man i thought i was doing this this fairly fast but i thought i could get it done in two hours right more than three hours have gone and i'm still here right but i don't feel bored you know i don't feel bored at all This to me is like, obviously, uh, if I was doing my own thing, it would be even better. But sometimes I like taking a break from my own stuff and looking at stuff that I would never do. I would never do this. I would only do this to study it, right? Um, but I would sometimes leave the drawing like this. Because I'm on a stream, I'm making the drawings a little bit nicer. Um, so you guys can understand it. Um, maybe you can understand it anyway, but still. Um, that's, that's how I like to, that's, this is my hobby, right? The, to, to do, to do the work like this. Um, now that's not right. So I've got to change that. That's probably more it's more going to be like. Now the water pattern. They would have actually got an effects animator to do this. Because they had the budget for such things. But I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, let's. So back to the point, what we're making is, is everything is like now everything stretched away, but his arms are like his shoulders are like the main point. And now everything is falling down on itself and the head is coming up and the legs are coming up back at the arm because he's still trying to keep this thing upright, even though it's completely spilled all over his head right now we can go in here and just bring this thing together good to see some old faces on the stream frank makes movies haven't seen him for a while Hope he's doing good. Um, 
course I'm super busy with the building the pro archive um, so the tail sits in here now we do the nice squash and stretch on the legs and the other one comes straight up just joins there like that okay we'll make that they all come together as one big triangle now they've all kind of been one big triangle except for there there when they're together they're always one big triangle right where are they again bum 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 there is another point there we go right so here they come together again like that but it's more literal a little insight into the secret science of uh, shape simplification which I know that Mr. Leon he will definitely be watching this stream um, he loves the whole shape simplification thing right I can be a little bit suggestive with this head actually because we got a lot of water splashing so not that the head is particularly hard but anything to save time you know and this is a good way since I don't care about the water splash we can just do that there we go all right um, Bum, 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 bum. Right, they've come together. Uh, what have we got now? Okay. I'm going to miss the in-between. And I'm going to just... Now we're stretching those arms. That's great. That's interesting. So now he's going to like... Level up. like this super cartoon the feet are still together like that but they're separated the arms get super stretched here But the hands kind of stay holding this thing in the same place, which is really interesting. So we're kind of, it's almost like we're really milking this. The whole thing, he's like been trying to save this thing. Now his head comes forward here. Now they're putting his eye there. So I've got to kind of keep my head back a little bit. Putting the head here probably. Like that. There we go. So that drops down. Bum, bum, bum. I'm going to turn this thing around a little bit more like that. I'm going to just do the water. 
coconuts. We gotta kind of animate the water now, which is pissing me off because I really don't want to. I'm not interested in it. As an afterthought, I'm more interested in the timing of the Donald. But we'll keep we'll keep the illusion. Right. It breaks up these kind of pattern shapes like that. goes over him right now this comes out the collar comes back on itself the bow tie is there that right let's tidy this so this is the squash and stretch the real squash and stretch where he's made contact with the ground right so we come down the tail is up we drag the legs they really don't care whether the legs are so perfect in length right um, so long as they're kind of almost there in each frame and that's one of the keys to doing a good walk cycle which is what I always tell people who are doing my training library walks look it's better you get the arc of the leg right rather than trying to measure the the length of the thigh and the length of the shin because you're actually going to lose volume doing that and it's going to slide around and look weird because your arc and your path of action is going to be the case that they're not going to measure the same. So you've got to, as I said, you've got to kind of balance the illusion intelligently by focusing on the arc right it's the arc and then you know whether you're a slight you know half a hand out or half a foot maybe half's a bit much a quarter out really doesn't matter you know which again going back to this the duck has got progressively smaller as I've been doing this study but it's because the illusion has been balanced it's not an issue like I can just go to the first section and just shrink the entire animation of the duck down right That's that. Now I can just go here and draw that. Let's look at that in relation to that. Yeah, that's about the same. He's all about the same size in this section. So it's just the cycle, the walk cycle. We lost it, which is easily manageable. Now I've only got a few frames left. What's the time? I'm only going to take him to the, to the point where he hits the floor. 3.26. Planning on eating some animations like a sketchbook and just having fun. Yeah, make your studies. Mr. Leon is there. Mr. Leon, you missed earlier. We had somebody defending the new style of cartoon animation over this. So I used your example. I said, look, we have people who've worked on the new stuff wanting to learn this stuff. Right, so there we see, even though he gets smaller in the next half, which is easily fixed, it goes together nicely, right? And even though that's like very few in-betweens, and there are in-betweens, I can scrub through it and it still reads that like he's slipping and falling, and that's the illusion because everything on the top is constant right let's just do um the next few ones um this is putting me off 
this live stream. So um, where are we? How many more we got? We got one. I'm just gonna do two. I'm gonna do two. So I'm gonna do the next frame. And then one more, right? So the next frame, we're gonna start sliding the sky out. So everything kind of is dropping down here. Now we're opening out the hands. Things are starting to open out now, right? So I'm going to open out those hands eventually. And the fingers are going to be like this. And this, um, this makes it really easy to, to draw the character as well once you know the model, right? I can just make marks like this. The head is going to come here. So we're going to do the circle for the head. The beak is going to be about here. The back collar is going to drag. Got a bit of a tail. These are going to kind of come forward. like that this thing turns over completely like that let's drop it down a bit let's check that arc yeah that'll do And then the water I'll just eyeball the water and then make I'll have to make a nice pattern on it when I tidy it up. But I'll do that. This is kind of slowing in on itself. Anyway. We'll get away with that. It doesn't matter. I'm not I'm not interested. Right, I'm more interested in the character. Right, so the eye is big time open now. We got hair. We can see a bit of hair. His beak is back here. I just want to get his head. The rest of him is easy. It's not that the head isn't either, but the placement for the volume, right? Um, there. Right, let's tidy this up. How are we? Are we going to make four hours? 3.32, easy. Easy. Dun, dun, dun. I'll read your comments at the end, guys. We're coming close. I've just got one more frame. I'm not going to take it. He actually bounces up and falls out the screen, and the the um, the the fish bowl goes on his head. It's actually a great piece of cartooning. Fun. I thought I had what it takes to have done it in the stream. I mean, if the stream was another hour, then yeah, sure. But I don't want to. Um, I don't want to hang around for another hour doing this. I do have things that I need to do. Um, this I have done slightly wrong. This foot needs to be bigger. So I'm not going to tolerate that. I actually turned this around and used the eraser on the big Cintiq. I never did that on the small Cintiq. Never. On the 16, on the 13 HD, on the 12 WX. 
Man, I did, I, I did love the 12WX. That was a loyal servant, right? But I turned this over. Right, there we go. Now, the hand is actually this way. So we need to make the sleeve go that way. Right. The bow tie is there. <coughs> and this goes back to what I was saying. <coughs> Excuse me. About um, once you know your model, the you can start roughing really quickly. And it's quite easy to draw to speed. And get this guy on model. <clears throat> I'm not a hundred percent with that <coughs> fish bowl, but it'll do for me. Let's do some slow line work. There we go. Right. Okay. I really am trying to bomb through this as quickly as possible, so don't have time for that kind of drawing at the moment. Um, yeah. His head's a little bit small, but it'll do right. Let's make nice patterns out of this water right because while I was kind of skimping on it before it was just a little bit too um, this time I corned it's a little bit too rough right do that and get away with that Effects animation is kind of easy to cheat like that anyway, but you know, you do want to draw it nicely because then it looks better. Um, right, yep, just one more frame to go and we are done. Right, let's save that. Did I see the save logo? Right, okay. Boom. Yeah, we'll end it there. So let's have him flat to the ground. This shape comes down. Now look how this this line, Mr. Leon, watch. Shape simplification. This line now turns open, right? into a triangle right like this bum 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 you see these legs come up Yeah, I like to use Mr. Leon's example because he illustrates what I said because he had that person taking personal offense that I said that the new Darkwing Duck was hopeless um, and said it's just my opinion. Yeah, it is just my opinion. It's Everybody just has an opinion, you know. But as I said, 20 years in the business, animation director, um head of story uh, not to mention character animation animator story artist regular for many years um, but never mind you could say well I'm a man of yesteryear you know 
that he's an old old dude that just likes to draw and says, Back in my day, everything was good. And all you youngsters, you do it all wrong and bad. It's all terrible sucks what you do. Absolute nonsense. But the fact is, is we got someone like Mr. Leon here in the chat who actually doesn't want to work in the industry anymore since he's discovered this way of animating because he actually worked for Disney he worked for Ninja Turtles he worked for Disney and he I mean he could correct me if I'm wrong but my memory serves he's had his full of it he he thinks that it's they're full of shit like they they don't they tell him to do stuff that looks bad and he's not happy with his work and he wants to um he wants to learn how to draw and animate properly um, so, you know, it's not just the old farts. Everybody wants to f do something and do it well. And that's what separates a real artist from a fanboy, you know, somebody who's just a certain age going through a passing phase at the moment in, in their life. And I'm not saying it to be mean, it's just true, you know. Will you, you like watching cartoons now? You're into all the latest shows. Will you still want to be doing drawing and animation in 10 years' time? You know, that, that's where the rubber hits the road. Will you still like cartoons when you discover girls or, or the members of the opposite sex and you have a child and then you've got to support them? Will you want to stake your life on your ability to draw and animate, will you have that kind of passion? Or will, are you, will you be a consumer just watching the stuff that other people make? You see, because once you le actually learn how this stuff is made, it doesn't seem so magical anymore. And I say that even for the Disney stuff. Like, I used to really hero worship those Renaissance guys in the 90s. Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Little Mermaid, Mulan, and all that. Don't get me wrong, it's good, it's great, it's, it's some of the best stuff out there, considering. But then, the more and more you study, the more and more you learn, the more and more you go back to the nine old men, Milk Carl, Mark Davis, Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnson, you know, Ward Kimball, um, even the ways of drawing, like Fred Moore, you think to yourself, man, that stuff is just, this stuff doesn't really compare, if I'm honest. I may have loved it at one point and loved it even more than the, than the older Disney stuff. But visually, you know, it, it ain't Sleeping Beauty. It ain't Lady and the Tramp. It ain't Bambi. Animation-wise, it ain't Sword in the Stone. It ain't uh, The Rescuers. It ain't Robin Hood. You know, um, so... You just got to, in that sense, mature a little bit and grow up a little bit when you want to get good at a skill and be honest with yourself. And it's okay to see things that you once thought were great and not think they're that great anymore, right? But the minute you are just a diehard fanboy... Um, that's when stagnation occurs, which is why I've always, you know, I always said I don't really rate anime animation and I still don't, but I'm open. I've done live streams where I've studied it. I've broken it down. I've studied the things that are, they do really well. They're really strong at drawing. You know, I've, I've learned from it. I'm open because what they do well, they do really well. So it's just about opening th opening up a little bit, you know. I think a lot of people who don't watch me regularly have a misconception that that I just praise the Disney stuff. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is the stuff that I'm the stuff that I talk about is. You know, it's done by the pioneers. It's done by the people that worked it all out. You know, and, you know, but by the masters, so to speak, you know, and sure, a lot of some people out there have, have, 
I don't want to say they've gone beyond because I don't believe they have. Some people out there have done great work that many would consider on parallel with the masters. Not me. But um, the whole thing is, is uh, it always is going to be like something is going to be lost from the original and something is going to be gained. That's true. So, but what I'm doing, since so much has been lost, so much when it comes to hand-drawn animation, I'm here to completely redress the balance. So I'm going to I'm going to point you to things that you some of you have never even heard of. You know, your grandparents weren't probably alive when some of these things were made, right? This short that I'm looking at right now, my dad was only 16 years old and now rest his soul, he's not on this earth anymore. You know, so um it's animation is got such a history to it you know and you got to study the masters artists that want to paint that are serious about painting they will study a Raphael Leonardo Picasso and all these different styles these masters they'll know it because they'll know where it all came from they'll know where the stuff all came from that's what having a real education is about. It's about understanding where all this stuff comes from. All right, enough of my little mini rant. Um, but that's why I stream. I stream to reach the right people. The right people who are passionate about all this stuff all right so that's where i'm gonna end it so he he falls like that right so he's walking along and he falls so as a recap with the walk we had the contact as a down pass, you know, the rear leg is almost in a down, his body is grounded, but his leg is, is out. As he goes in the pass position, he comes up, and his leg is high up, it's bent high up. But it goes up further for an up, right? There is a down, but the down is just a straight in between into the, into the, into the pass position, so not really a down, okay, it's just the down of the foot, right? Not really a body down, right? So, but here the the same thing. The, the 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 leg is coming up, but the body's on its way down. But we really linger, and then we kick that leg out into the next contact. So we have this really nice step. Now, what we have here is this double bounce. Can you see this going from a bent leg to a stretched leg to a bent leg? But it's subtle, and it's... The spacing is close together there, so you really feel that kind of like little kind of pompous stride in his step there, that little bounce there, giving him that feel. Now he lands. Now here's where I, where I kind of lost my size a little bit, but that's okay. I can just either blow it up or shrink it down. It doesn't matter. He's all to proportion. So here we start going into big jumps, but we see the leg is open as a drag and then it plays catch up but all the time what's keeping it constant so it doesn't jance around is the head is all in one position you know throughout so we're still watching that move and the leg is kind of here and it stays, it just slides along like that, right? The opposing action, this goes forward, this goes backwards, right? Then this goes down, this goes up, right? As he comes down on his butt, right? Now we're going to start a kind of like same kind of walk cycle of this circular leg motion, 
as he comes to the ground, right? So he recoils that leg. This leg shoots through. There are in-betweens, which I didn't have time to do, but then it, it shoots through and comes up like this. And then it comes round here. And then again, the natural thing is, is as this leg's going this way, this leg's going this way, it's splayed. But then again, what's making this all work is, is look how slow and subtle this you know he's just staying in this position and it's funny because if you watch his face like i would have made him like open his mouth and go oh isn't that cartoony but this is funnier because he's been caught by surprise and the water is hitting him but he's still trying to save the fishbowl right his hand's still trying to save the fishbowl and he's holding it. And even at the end when he falls, his hands are still holding the fishbowl, but it gives a nice finish because when he comes tumbling down, the hands are all, you know, ready to fall flat on his back, but he doesn't. There's a lot more to the animation, which is what I said about this kind of animation. It's always something more. Go watch it. It's called... How to have an accident at home. Absolutely stunning uh, little set pieces for you to study. So hopefully you've enjoyed um, you've enjoyed watching this. Now I will come. We have three hours thirty seven minutes. I will come to the chat in a minute. But um, what I'm going to do is uh, tell you about you know if you've enjoyed this and you found it fruitful, then I'm going to tell you about my real animator training library because that's where that's what keeps me online that's what keeps hand-drawn animation alive it's the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation um, if you go to ambanimation.com and you click on real animator training you will be taken to this page now let's say you've already been convinced you've seen my live streams you know i'm the baddest out there you know that you can learn from this guy so you click join now um here's someone who you can see this other people's people who have gone through the training library it's split into two what you've seen today is much like what you get in the edutainment archive right lots of valuable information but I ramble a lot, I talk a lot, and I'm doing a lot of drawing, I'm doing a lot of advanced stuff, and it's like a demonstration, right? So if you like this stream, you're going to get tons of them in what we call the edutainment archives. The edutainment archives, if we click on those, um, I don't quite know why, oh, okay. Um, they will take you to um, animation sessions where you can watch me animating fresh content, Drawing sessions, I'll design characters, ask the animator. Animation breakdowns. What we did today is an animation breakdown, right? I looked at somebody else's animation, I made a study from it, and I told you about the things I discovered. We got tons in here. Um, we got Disney squirrels. We look at this scene from Disney Sword in the Stone with these squirrels. Um, each one of these is 3 hour 14, 3 hour 33, 3 hour 35. You see, much like today's live stream, right? You've got the Thundercats intro. You can watch me breaking that down. We do uh, two parts of the Thundercats intro. Uh, we've got uh, Yosemite Sam. This was a fun one, kind of like what we did today. So you can watch me making a study of Yosemite Sam. We've got uh, a Disney fight sequence with Robin Hood. Uh, we don't just have Disney stuff in here. You saw the Thundercats. What have we got? We've got um, an anime run cycle in here. So we've got this anime run cycle. We've also got this Rob uh, Ninja Scroll sword fight. So if you want to see that. But if you're into anime, we have got the ultimate anime breakdown archive for you, right? So if you like today's stream... And you want to see me doing this stuff to anime stuff. I've got an absolute treat for you. We've got this anime Sakuga action and effects archive. Now in here, we've got anime fight scene parts 1 to 4, parts 5 to 8, parts 9 to 11. So if I just play the this real animator. Second, 
you can see that we basically break down and study the whole of this, uh, well, not the whole, but a lot of this Naruto fight scene, uh, and I share uh, everything about it uh, that there is. And after the Naruto scene, um, we look at uh, we look at special effects. So you could see I took it quite far, like. <laughs> So we've got like 11 streams of the Naruto fight scene where we ended at this point. And then we start studying uh, anime special effects from various things like uh, I believe that was Howl's Moving Castle. This was Weathering With You. Um, this was Akira. We study smoke. We study explosions. So we study the swimming. So this is, uh, this is the anime breakdown archive. Um, so again, they're, they're what we call edutainment. They're entirely like today's stream. They're, they're not step-by-step -step follow along training streams because of the nature of the content. Um, if you want training, you go to the training archives where you really learn how to do it properly for real. So these are considerably more in price, but this is still the best value um, you're gonna get out there. As I said, we've got people who have been to Cal Arts, people who have been to Full Sail, people who have been to um, Sheridan Animation Mentor, Bluth University. They all come and learn from here. We've even got some, I mean, Mr. Leon in the chat, he basically um, worked for Ninja Turtles and Disney, and he, he's come to learn here. We've got people who, all other people who have worked at Cartoon Network joining this place. So this, they, they, they want to up their game. And basically, yeah, you're getting, you're getting all of that for the price of a drone or the price of a gaming laptop. So, you know, while I say that you're going to save with the bundles, you can buy each archive individually. The whole thing is just the best value out there. You're getting the world's best animation training for the price of a gaming laptop, really. So here you're going to learn about, you're going to learn in step by step, follow along tutorials, much shorter videos, an hour and a half max, because you've got to concentrate, you've got to watch the video, you've got to draw along with me. You've got basics, intermediate, advanced, and I'm building a pro archive. You've got anatomy, skeleton. Watch these videos, they'll give you an overview. But basically, in the basics archive, you learn the six laws of life, six laws of movement, sorry. In order to give something life, you've got to first understand movement. So with the basic ball and pendulum, you learn timing, slowing in, slowing out, um, and pose to pose. You also learn arcing, obviously, uh, with the standard walk cycle, jogging cycle, run cycle, front walk cycle, front run cycle, head turn. You will learn also about solid drawing, follow through, overlap and drag, and squash and stretch. One of the laws of life is in there. In the intermediate archive, you learn about, um, you work with the flower sack and you learn about the six laws of life. So you have anticipation, you have squash and stretch, you've got primary and secondary action, you've got staging, exaggeration and appeal. You also learn a little bit about doing a character turnaround with the flower sack. You then learn all the quadruped actions uh, in there. In the advanced archive, you consolidate all 12 laws, six laws of movement, six laws of life, and you learn about drawing things on model. You learn about the secret science of shape simplification. So what we did here with this Donald Duck is we talked about drawing lots of shapes and mastering those shapes. Um, so you learn about how to do that through this peacock sequence, which is, I think it's about um, eight videos where you start with simple lines and then build shapes and then you have all these complicated feathers and things and before you're knowing you're managing all these shapes like a boss. You also got advanced solid drawing this 360 head rotation where you learn how to construct a face and draw this kind of Disney-esque head. Disney-esque head and then you go one further with this 15 part series on turning around an entire human torso and getting a full body turn around to that you learn about muscles and things and that as well and then we have our advanced quadruped cycle where you put personality in walk so you learn how to make this dog strut his, strut, strut his stuff and then alternate between cycles something kind of like what we did today because this is all a cycle right this is all a loop right it feels like he's moving but he's uh, 
is a, is 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 all a loop, right? So, and then we have a a animating dialogue, which isn't a follow along video, but uh, it's kind of an introduction to dialogue, which will be a good primer to what you get, what what we're working on now, building the Pro Archive. So that is Real Animator Training Library, the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation, bar none. The graduates wish they had it. The pros wish they had it. And you definitely can have it. So go check out ambanimation.com and start bringing your dreams into reality. Okay, right. Let me just click save on this once more. And I'm going to come and have a chat with you guys. We got an interesting comment at the end there, um, which I'm going to read out first. Um, I'm someone who works in the anime industry, and even though a lot of us under animate for acting scenes and fight scenes are usually focused on, your videos encourage me not to be limited. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you kindly. You're exactly the kind of um, person that... Uh, that I really uh, am hoping to connect with on my streams because um, my study of anime actually taught me how to use less frames and I, lear I learned so much from that and it's made me a stronger animator because I have a lot to get through and I'm a one man person and I don't have the time to give us the, the content rich performance that I would have liked to have given. So I find that I've learned some shortcuts from anime that I can apply to the Disney uh, mentality to get really good results on twos and to like using a lot more favors than I than I would use before. I would like to use thirds, and after using thirds, I would then like to um, like to slow in a lot more. Sometimes I just don't have the time, and I just use a favor, and I get that staccato anime timing. But when you mix it with the fluid Disney stuff, it looks great. So thank you for that. Um, I mean, I've learned a lot from your system too uh, and as I said I'm open I'm open to even though I have feelings about things and I know that this I know the way certain things are it's like you should be open to looking at this thing uh, so thank you for sharing that that was a great comment it makes everything I do really worthy um, everything that I'm doing really worthy uh, on, on, on my channel. Um, of course, if you can do what A and B is doing, it makes it a whole lot easier. The best I can come up with is to try and do a style. Um, I'm just getting a lot of, um, I'm getting a lot of people contacting me. I just hope that everything outside is okay. Yeah, everything outside should be fine. I just need to finish finish up. Um, I wish there was a job board like most Western jobs. The main way I've been able to work on anime was to, to do it through other people. This is Simon Badouin. The best I can come up with is to try to do the style a lot reaching out to studios and anime freelancing they're usually online studios of course if you can do what AMB is doing makes it a whole lot easier well you can I mean everything takes time and everything takes uh, patience but as long as you see it through you'll get there seriously um, most people can never fail right but they just give up along the way patience gets the better of them so just remember that, you know, there is no failure. Um, uh, in a sense, 2D animation today is at the crossroads. We study legendary animation and it's wild. There's so much. Yeah, it's all there for you guys. 
um, just to study. Exactly, uh, for old Mayfly, you, you get it. And for old Mayfly is a real animator training library member who's also been to Bluth. And I'm glad she's been to Bluth because she's had a connection with somebody now who was alive when Sleeping Beauty was being made and who worked on that film. And I believe that that's going to enrich her in, in more ways to go and if she's not it's if she's not getting inspired by me telling her to look at old stuff which i know that she doesn't need inspiration for she's always looking at old stuff anyway but she's got another person who's i made her draw on paper more and i'm seeing her working a lot on paper now and a lot of training library members are working on paper as well so it's just great because working on paper one of the reasons i got this big cintiq I never needed it. I could afford five, ten of them if I wanted to, to be very honest with you. But I never bothered getting it because I had no interest because I was used to working on a small Cintiq in the industry. We all started with the 12WX. That was cutting edge when it was made. And then I got used to working on small things because that's what it is. Storyboard, zooming in, doing frame by frame animation. But when I went back to draw on this guy here, when I started my own thing, I forgot how good it was and how free it was to draw big and to draw on paper. And I was finding it harder and harder to come back to my small Cinti. So I said, it's time to just get, and it was paper. It was my love for drawing on paper that, that made me do that. Otherwise I wouldn't have. I would have just carried on working with the small one. You share with me how you find job openings and I find those type of jobs in my... Oh, that's great. Mr. Leon is helping him. And uh, lots of people working in the industry helping each other find jobs on my site. That's what we want. That's what we want. Productivity. That's what I always say to my audience. You know, whoever comes on this stream, just be aware, right, of the increase that you're getting. Not just through me through the people in the chat it's like you've stepped into a place where you're able to interact with people professionals who work uh, in the animation industry and people who are currently doing what you would like to do right now which is make money working for for anime studios working for disney like mr leon or Whoever made Ninja Turtles, was it Nickelodeon? I've lost, I don't know who did that now. Are you, the old one used to be DIC. Um, it's always interesting. You're really cool since you're not hell bent on being that kind of traditionalist mentality. Yeah, the thing is, is I'm not a traditionalist. I'm just somebody that wants to grow and get good. Um, and if, 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 if something is correct, then I'll study that thing that's correct. I'm not just looking at this stuff because it's old. I'm looking at this stuff because it's the best example, not because it's traditional. I mean, I've always said it. I mean, people misunderstand me. They think I'll go and defend Animaniacs and Tiny Toons and all those awful TV cartoons and like the Darkwing Duck of the 90s. Like... No, that was animated. That, that's awful. Just because it was drawn on paper and the designs for them were great. The potential was great. But the execution was awful. So, and I'll, and I'll say it. So, and, and the reason why I'm saying it is because I want to share it with you guys. So you guys are eating from the same plate as me. You're drinking from the same cup as me. And when I get something wrong, or if I have to backtrack on something, like I maybe did about, about anime, a little bit, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll come out and say it. Because for me, pride, ego, is all well and good, but they're just servants. What the mo most important thing is the end result, getting good. I'm not interested in defending where I am. I'm in interested in getting to where I'm going, right? And I'm pretty sure that that's what deep down inside a lot of you people 
um, would like to do as well to, to just reach your goal right often defending where you are stops you from doing that because that's what pride is um, the last gig was traumatic they wanted me to animate 55 seconds in one week rough clean color without taking in consideration the learning curve got faster by the end only animated half it was puppeteering even touch the job book and he said 2d traditional animation yeah it's all a lie they say 2d traditional is alive in that regard that's why i say it's not a it's not dead but it's suffering a fate worse than death and that's why i'm here i'm here to show people the real way that hand-drawn animation is done not all this hybrid shit of draw rough out the movements and then make your stupid rig along the keys and slide the head and slow in so do all this big sakuga movement but then when the characters slow use the mechanical rig drifting you know to slow it. it's just awful you know it's not alive no illusion of life and that's what two of the greatest animators coined animation to be ollie johnson and frank thomas they said animation the illusion of life absolutely Okay, I remember Frol Mayfly saying that, and I remember those comments. Okay, so we have done all of the comments now. Maybe, um, no, I haven't heard of that mo movie, BC Wensdale. Wendale. I don't watch much content anymore, to be honest with you. Um, if something catches my eye, I look at it, but I'm just too busy creating these days. And that's not me just trying to be sweet, uh, what's the words, smart with my words. It's true. I've just got, I'm so into my own stuff and I'm just so busy that the little time I have is for my family. Um, I don't have time to watch things anymore. I'm just creating stuff. And if I find interesting things, it's when I'm researching stuff that I want to create. Um, so if I'm making a show, then I'll research and I'll find this show that's a bit more current than the stuff that I like and I'm like whoa what's that and I'll look into that and that's where I discover new shows and that's where I make studies and things like that okay so that is it that is the end of the chat um, I may edit this stream uh, because we had a little section of the stream where I was chatting and the camera was on my face Thankfully, I didn't lose any of my audience. Perhaps it's because I'm so handsome. But <laughs> there you go. Um, but anyway, I appreciate that. I appreciate all your viewership. Keep working hard. Keep doing, um, keep dreaming those dreams and drawing them into reality. And remember, as always, keep it real. All right. I'll see you all on the next live stream as and when. I get round to getting uh, my um, dialogue sequence to the state that it needs to be to do the next part. Okay, see you later, people. Keep it.